Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Drop Frame Sunday. Hope you're having a good start to the spookiest month of the year. That's right, it's October somehow. Wait, <laughs> this... It, somehow. Somehow it's here. That September <laughs> was a blink. And it's the spooky month. Rami, what do you think about uh, Halloween? Let's ask the hard questions here up front. Is Halloween well, the, a good month? Well, the, the problem with Halloween is it's the day after my birthday, so it can it can go screw itself. Oh, well, hap, hap, there. Night, uh, the thirtieth, I assume. The hap, happy birthday. So, yep. yeah. wait a minute, Rami, you were born on Devil's Night. <laughs> yeah, and I was let loose on the games industry. Wow, that was my mission. That's awesome. I thought I thought my birthday was cool because on the day that I was born, the 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 day, the date, the actual date, uh-huh. uh, a black cloud covered like the uh, western part of the United States because Mount St. Helens erupted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so on my birthday, the headlines were like, "A dark cloud descends upon Montana." <laughs> it was like... in the you know. <laughs> Back in the 30s when all that went down. That's uh, Zeke's yeah. been around. Yeah. Been around. Yeah. <laughs> been around. Anyways, Robbie, welcome back. I know it's only been uh, two weeks since we've had you, but, you know, it felt like we should just uh, have another discussion. The, the Unity stuff is done. So people are use, losing their jobs across the industry, and we're just going to have a happy say, little episode. I, I love that somebody in chat was like, oh, great, Robbie's here. More depressing Unity talk. <laughs> Nay, <laughs> sir. Today it's depressing game dev talk. That's right. Yeah. It's so, depressing on. Unreal Talk. Oh, yes. oh we've got oh, depressing right. yeah, Unreal right Talk. I don't I'm not yeah. sure what happened with Unreal. You'll have to fill us in well, on that. Yeah. I don't I'm I'm clueless on that one. I just know that a bunch of people uh oh oh you're talking about Epic losing their job. That's what that's referenced mm -hmm. to. Gotcha. Yep. I didn't realize that was from the Unreal team. Uh the people mm -hmm. that I knew, I know it was nine hundred folks uh ish that were let go. Um, I think was it is it twelve percent or eighteen percent of the workforce? Sixteen percent, yeah, uh, is what Jason Schreier was reporting. Um, I know a lot of those folks were influencer managers because I saw pretty much everyone from that team uh, saying oh, like, entire like, teams are yeah. gone. And yeah. studios also entire studios have evaporated oh, yeah. in the last few days. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it's wild. Was it Mediatonic? Mediatonic? Mediatonic, Mediatonic, Mediatonic yeah. which has mm -hmm. the most unfortunate anagram in the history of mankind. Uh, I saw that. Apparently, Medi Mediatonic can be rearranged to be decimation. Yeah, the team was very of that as well, so they put up their logo name in that order. Yeah, yeah. They uh, when did they get acquired? That was earlier this year, right? By Epic, or was yeah, that not that long ago? It was no, not that long no, ago. No, it was a but... bit longer ago. Okay. But, yeah, and in games under industry standards. Not that long ago. Yeah. Uh, I think Let most of them, I, I don't know the percentage, but a large yeah, 2021. Percentage. Okay. A large percentage of them uh, are, are no longer at Epic, which kind of ridiculous. Uh, but that's the game industry. That's, that's where we're at right now. I saw a bunch Yay. of uh, devs tweeting this year, uh, or tweeting this past week, that it's been like one of the greatest years for gamers, but for game devs, it's been one of the worst years. Uh, just in... I do want to challenge that, but we'll do it later. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Just in terms of job stability. I was going to say, like, I bet you have something to say about that. Don't you, Ronnie? <laughs> I saw your Twitter, <laughs> your Twitter's back and forth. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hear what that is. Uh, but in terms of just general news, not that it's been, you know, apart from the, the industry stuff, the biggest thing that happened this past week at least by Reddit standards, Valve released Counter Strike Two, and it took over Steam. Uh, and and that's it's kind of in the influencer world. All that meant I, it was kind of funny how fast that was. Like, guys, let's play some CS:GO, and then they just opened boxes uh, for <laughs> about two <laughs> streams. Uh, there's a pretty clear cut uh, line in terms of playing CS2 and opening boxes. Uh, and you can kind of find a content yep. creator uh, that does uh, that does both of uh, does one of those, not both of those necessarily. So, so real quick, do you do you is that a pay real money to? Get oh yeah, random shit. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's like, straight so up it's gambling. gambling. It's, it's straight gambling. up gambling. It's one hundred percent gambling. Yeah, straight up okay. gambling. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay. Gambling because even, the items you're getting are worth a huge amount of money in some cases. Yeah. So it's, it's a slot machine. Tens of yeah. thousands, if not hundreds of thousands <clears throat> of dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, well, it's well, so cyclical here on Twitch where it's like, oh, yeah, CSGO is popular again. It kind of always has been popular. But CSGO gambling is popular again. Uh, and that's been like a two or three year cycle where people will, you know, fish for a knife and then that'll go viral and yada, 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 yada. It is now they got gloves. I think gloves or gloves have been in CS. What's the what's the thing that they added in CS2? There was a new cosmetic item. Boots, gloves. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's something else that now you can get. Uh oh, there's nothing yet. Okay, never mind. Um anyways, it's a whole mess. Kind of. Um so people will pay like oh whoops. One second. There, sorry, I, I had to mute my alerts. I apologize. Oh, um, I didn't hear it. You're yeah. Uh, so people will pay like, obviously they'll pay to gamble, but like what the things that are worth money, people will like buy on the open market. Yeah. Well, they will. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know how frequently that stuff is changing uh, hands. Uh, I, I, you don't hear you don't hear about like the sales of the stuff. At least I don't. You hear about the like, oh, yeah. I open this this knife and it's worth X amount of tens of thousands of dollars. Um, but right. it's kind of like NFTs in a way. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like it, it seems like I hear about like the I found the super rare thing, but if no one's going to buy it, it's worth zero dollars. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They have value because people establish the value. Right. So it, it very, in that, in that regard, it's similar to NFTs, but I mean, it's, a, it's, you know, there's, there's a rarity aspect as well. So it's like Pokemon cards, you know, or, or the same thing. So, yeah. Okay. And also uh, valve specifically does not allow you to like cash out of their ecosystem. You have to go to other places to do so. I believe, I don't sure. think you could just be like, yeah, I'm going to back out. I'm, I'm getting all my money out of, Counter Strike. You have to go to like. It's a third still party. kind of hilarious though, because there's no question that if they wanted to, they could very easily crack down on that. And yeah, they don't. They, have to <laughs> they, do they absolutely don't. do not. Yeah, yeah, they do. Europe not. is kind of looking at that stuff at the moment. I actually was was uh, called a few weeks ago by the EU to to talk about like loot boxes gambling and stuff. In games. Oh yeah, yeah, loot boxes, gambling in games, and they're really trying to crack down on it. But it it's kind of nice because. They're doing it in a very, um, they're, they're being very careful with it. They also don't want to harm like games industry practices that a lot of people do enjoy, right? Like I'm not a free to play fan, but it's hard to argue that that stuff isn't like 50% of the games industry. Mm -hmm. So um, they want to find a way where they can say, okay, this is gambling, this is not. And they're really trying to figure out like, where's that line? So they're they're talking to a lot of people, people who make money with it, people who don't make money with it, people who like it, people who dislike it, people who are positively affected, negatively negatively affected. Yeah. I'm definitely on the like, let me talk shit about loot boxes camp. And it's always really <laughs> fun because last time I got called into one of these, it was like one of those really fun round tables where I was like, Rami Ismail, indie developer at Vlambeer, and then like EA, Zynga, and a bunch <laughs> of others like in the room, and I was like, so I think it's bad. You saw everybody else in the room be like, we will fucking find you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. They're like texting their lawyers and like, yes, yeah. it's R-A-M-I. Uh, yeah. Is my Luckily, yes. nobody can spell my last name. Yeah. So it's good. We're good. <laughs> I had to triple check on that one. Uh, yeah, they always put an H in there for some reason. It's yeah. true. It's true. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I just, I just, I was giggling because you're like, the EU called me. <laughs> Hello? The yes, actual Rami. EU. This is the yeah. EU. This is John EU. <laughs> we have something to tell you. <laughs> actually, would it be John EU? What's the, what's the EU parallel? Uh, Jan. Jan the dog. No, it actually, Jan. Yeah, 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 Johan or, or Johan. Johan. Jacques, Jacques, Jacques EU. Yeah. Jacques yeah. yeah. EU. I like that. <laughs> depends on which country you're talking to. It might be one EU. Yeah, it really just depends yeah. which country. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Good point. All of the Johns. Uh, yeah. That's that's. Good it's point. always a variation off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Jean Luc EU. That's probably the uh, the biggest release. I, Jean Luc. I saw a headline going around. I don't know if like where if Val if this was just 
if it was fictitious, if Valve put this out, but apparently they made $40 million in the first 40 minutes of the game being live uh, through loot boxes or something like that. Uh, or, or through uh, boxes, uh, whatever whatever the, the parallel is. I, I feel terrible uh, not knowing that, being that that game has been out for that long. <laughs> what, 13 years, 10 years, something like that? Cases, yeah, thank you. Um, it's doing... Uh, Wh- yeah. Whale's gonna whale. Whale's That's gonna right. Whale. Whale's gonna whale. Yeah. Yeah, you I'm, know, I've I've done like actual like blackjack, like blackjack streams, and I've done that shit like, and it's just the only thing, like it, it just makes me want to switch because it seems like, like it, being like completely on this like I am doing card game gambling on my stream. Yeah, and it seems like I would have a better time if I just never ever played a, a single second of CS:GO and just did the loot box thing. I mean, there are streamers that do that. <laughs> oh, Stream- streamers that exclusively do that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and it's it's. I can't find that confirmed. I can find it as a tweet. But okay. Like, I it might be just surprised. be a. It might just be a troll tweet. I'm sure that number's not far off. If it was a fictitious tweet, they probably raked in the money uh, with that. Going so you public. hear that, hundred monthers? <laughs> if you want a good good suggestion, just suggest a, a, a Counter Strike loot box stream or a great great stream. That's a good idea. <laughs> But then you got to decide which case because they they have it's not just one case Zeke they have high roller cases where you can buy a case that costs like I don't know fifty bucks whatever the market demands uh, so it's it's not just a five dollar case it's you get to scale uh, to see if you can go big or go home they have it all it's all in yeah. there it's ridiculous <laughs> video, fucking video game show what the hell yeah yeah. Uh, what uh, else? What went wrong? What else happened? Uh, her, uh, Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition is coming to PC. That was officially announced. That'll be here next year. Uh, the port is going to be done by, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Nixus, Nixies. They're, they're the ones that have Nixus, done yeah, the, the good ports. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're the in-house, I think in-house. Are they? They are. They're now in-house. They're, they're, yeah. They were bought. They were yeah. bought. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, I think the complete edition comes out on PS5 like next week. Uh, if you have been looking to f- uh, buy that bundle, uh, and then some other big gaming news: Jim Ryan stepping down. Uh, he is the former, or I guess current, still for now, uh, CEO at uh, PlayStation, but he will be leaving. Um, I don't know the exact timeline on that, but he's out. Uh, and it was it was kind of widely celebrated in a weird way, I think, by the majority of the gaming ecosystem, at least the circles that I run in. Um, yeah, yeah, not I think so. Like, not too many folks uh, are big fans of Jim Ryan. He made some good calls, you know. Like he's definitely part of like the team that got um, PlayStation games, for example. Uh, you know, now Horizon Forbidden West coming to PC. That's a lot of that is Jim Ryan, but also. He decimated a bunch of teams that a lot of developers loved working with. You know, like he's in charge of the company, the buck stops with him. And there's been a lot of things where I'm like, why would you do that? Like, you know, his move to mobile kind of failed. To, like he's doing a lot of weird devices that are kind of weird. Why did Shua Yoshida end up in a different position? I don't know. Where did Adam yeah, he go? Got... Like, where did the indie teams go? Like, you know, there's, there was a lot of like, every time PlayStation got on top, Jim just went like, no, no, we're too far ahead. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, I, I don't know what the guy was thinking, but like, I think a lot of people in games are just like, well, hopefully we'll get some sanity and like stability uh, up there. Like, I'm sure he was maybe good to work with, but um, you know, as long as we don't get Bobby Kotick hopping from Activision to PlayStation. I'm just... <laughs> oh God, he Could brought donuts imagine? every Friday, man. He was good, dude. <laughs> yeah, could do a mansion, <laughs> Jesus. Um, looks like and the uh, new one. It... <laughs> yeah, uh, Hiroki, oh God, Hiroki to, to, Toki, I guess, who is the Sony Group Corporation President, CFO, and CEO, uh, will be handling it, uh, it says starting October 2023, uh, is the interim CEO, uh, and then in March 2024, they will find a permanent CEO slash chairman for Jim Ryan, so March of next Sorry, year. It's not, it's not going to be Bobby Kotick, it might be Don Matrick, though, that'd be funny. Yeah, he just, he's back. He's gonna. He's gonna just do Matrix again. It's online only PlayStation this time. 
<laughs> That'll be good. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be uh, great. Uh, no, but PlayStation has a long sort of like um, um, they always grab somebody unknown. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they well. I mean, they they brought in. Uh, is it Her- Herman? Uh, Herman? Oh God, Holst. Right, he, he was from Holst, Gorilla. Yeah. yeah, he's now the head. But of But he went to games, head of, right uh, for the first party, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shuei Yoshida's old gig. Right. Um, and they moved him to like indies or something like. Yeah, they moved Shuei to indies, which honestly he works well with indies. I just, I'm just sad he's out of the limelight. I yeah. really like Shu. I only Shu see him great. on Twitter. I only see him promoting Gold. indies on Twitter. He's never in like Golden a Age play. PlayStation was Shuei and Adam Boys. That was like in terms of working with PlayStation, that was that was the time. Any chance yeah. you think Adam Boys comes back, or is he is he happy over at uh, Iron Galaxy? I would think he's happy at Iron Galaxy. Like, I mean, they seem to be doing well. They're, you know, they they have a rough time with their own IP every now and then. Like, Rumble First was obviously a bit of a you know disappointment, but. Um, no, I think overall, I I would guess he's happy. I, yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Might be, might just be an unknown. Um, I don't think too much will change between now and then anyways for, for PlayStation. So did, did the, I saw, is it pre-orders went live for that handheld thing for that they're selling for 200? That's like cloud. Have you guys seen that? It's like the, the portal. Yeah. The, is that what it's called? The official name's the portal. I saw it was. I think so. I saw it was two hundred bucks. Did I just leak something? Please tell me that was already out. <laughs> okay, that was out. <laughs> Need one of these, man. Yeah. <laughs> Need one of those buttons, dude. That's true. That's true. You just scared the crap out of me, mate. Look, like, that's just oh, me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's me. That's me doing that. Oh, uh, not you. oh I thought you meant like my beeping. Like I thought. Uh, no, 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 no. Like just, just he was. No, just JP going like, wait, is that what it's called? I'm like, oh my god. No, that's just me not knowing <laughs> what it's called because I'm, I'm uninformed. Here we go. This is the okay, okay. Uh, the PlayStation Portal. Uh, you could pre-orders went live. It looks like it's uh, available on November the fifteenth, uh, and it it's cloud only, right? I don't think it runs hmm. anything native. Uh, yeah, it runs nothing native. Yeah, lets you stream games over your Wi-Fi. You can play your PS5 console even when someone else is using the TV. It's connected to. Yeah, so we turn on the. So it's not even bundle. cloud. It, it's Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 So basically, if you want to take your game to the toilet, this is your chance. Yeah. Two hundred is a little steep. Uh, if if that was ninety nine, I might. Take a look at it, but that's pretty pricey. Is it only on your personal Wi-Fi network? I would assume I so. so. It's whatever your PlayStation's connected to. Okay. Because you, so, have, you so, have to have a PlayStation. Yeah. So anywhere that you can connect to your own router. Yeah. It says only one PlayStation portal can be connected to a PS5 console at any <clears> time. That seems silly. I don't know. Jim Ryan thought it was a great idea. <laughs> I, I guess it's uh, maybe this is useful for like parents that uh want their tv back or something in the like living room i guess uh i don't i don't see much i don't know, i don't see much use for it other than that uh especially at 200 bucks that's kind of pricey you can, can do I, the haptics yeah, yeah yeah if you can't download your games onto the device itself so you can take it on an airplane or whatever it seems like a like a fucking dumb idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't think you can i don't think you can uh if you bring your playstation 5 on the airplane though then you can connect <laughs> Put it and hook it up to the plane's wi-fi and yeah. then and no. then play with your controller <laughs> there you go boom yeah. done just put sure. it in your backpack i'm sure it's happened before i'm sure it's a thing oh, and find a place to plug it in of course most planes have like power outlets now don't they like three three prong stuff below the i guess larger yeah. longer uh planes longer distance planes i guess not like a, a two or three hour job but uh so that's all happening um i know you guys are huge <laughs> huge sad big sad about this uh but marvel's avengers has been delisted you can no longer acquire marvel's avengers oh the game yeah, it's been delisted from all storefronts. Uh, it is still playable for anyone who picked it up before the takedown. 
Um, but I think that means that their licenses has uh, license has run out for all of that. So, is is that an online only game? Womp womp. Or or can you play it? Like, is there a uh, campaign or something you play on your own? There is a campaign in the game. Yeah, but the ma- the it was designed to be a like online Destiny esque thing. Oh, okay. With like loot and and power levels, but you can. Uh, okay. You can, it has a single player. I think you could play through most of that stuff um, offline. Well, well, when you, when you said it's like Destiny, that, that makes sense then. Cause Destiny has a campaign as well, but like, you know, the lion's share of the time you spend is other you know, multiplayer stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I think go ahead, it's Ron. kind of a weird one, honestly, you know, like, oh, I, so. I mean, Embrace, Embracer is kind of out of money. So that makes sense. But like. Because it's Crystal Dynamics, right? So yes. it's Embracer. Yeah. So uh, it's Embracer. So yeah, probably don't want to pay for the license anymore. That's probably that's pricey. The, that's the bet, right? But still, it's sort of like hyper dramatic to be like, you can buy the game until tomorrow. And then and it's I've, gone. I've not, storefronts. <laughs> I've not seen that before. Like it, Maybe well, there was some kind of, maybe there was some kind of uh, advantageous reason for them to not want to sell more. Yeah, well, it's probably the license, or they made it in Unity. That's possible. <laughs> True, could be. Could I wonder be if case. they had some kind of deal where the more sold, the more fees they had, or something. You know, kind of like uh, the Unity thing. Funny yeah. enough, yeah, sure. you know, maybe it was some version of that where it's like you know, the more copies that go out, the more they owe. So yeah, who knows, man? Who knows, indeed? Uh, did you guys see what the Capcom president said? The Capcom president let everyone know. That game prices are too low. <laughs> you know, I was thinking that the triple was, disc was monster hunter people. All of these games, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, here's I mean, the here's the, the full quote. Are too high. Uh, the full quote: is, <laughs> Development costs are about a hundred times higher than during the Famicom era, but software prices have not gone up that much. Uh, there is also a need to raise wages. Considering the fact that wages are rising in the industry as a whole, I think raising unit prices is a healthy option for business. So it's, I mean, he's he's coming from a good place, I guess, in terms of wanting to wa- raise wages, but I don't know how people are going to treat the... The idea of paying more for games, especially the, from the company as co-stated that sold Monster Hunter three times uh, yeah. for the past two release. They sold Rise I, four times, didn't they? Switch, PS4, PS5, and then PC last, I think. So it might, might have been three. might have been four. Yeah. Rob, any, any takes on the Capcom president's words? Well, shit. He's right, but also he's wrong. Okay, like it's, it's it's that thing where he's right. Games, the way they're being made now, you can't sustain them with the prices they're being they're that that are being asked. Like that's why we keep seeing people putting microtransactions into every fucking video game. It's why all the studios are collapsing right now. It's just it's too risky. Like it, it just making games makes no sense whatsoever. Um, the problem is though, that the the reason these companies keep collapsing as we're going to talk about with the unreal thing later, is just, it's not that people are spending too much on games. It's dumb CEOs making stupid decisions. And then, you know, oops, we invested more than we earn in metaverse too bad. (laughs) You lose 900 people now. Yeah. Listen, Um, you don't become CEO of a big company by making dumb decisions, Rami. So, but like, uh, with, with you know what? I'm gonna zed about this real quick. <laughs> We're gonna say with, with the with the cash shop and the extra additional options thing is is it is it really? Do you think an option of them needing to, or or more of them seeing that they can become more profitable that way? Take Diablo Four as an example. If they were a sixty dollars base game, I mean, they would have made back their money regardless. But we have you know all this other stuff to make it to make to make millions and millions and millions more come in. So right. is is it really that they need the extra money or is it more that just they're money-making companies that want the extra money? So the answer is kind of twofold. If it's a publicly traded company, they need to make mm. more. 
Like that that's just how that's their job at that point, right? <laughs> it's literally like the games are not their job. Growing is their job, right? Which is why the industry is on fire continuously, because the main customer is not the gamers, it's the shareholders. That's that's complete like 90% of the games industry being fucked over is that. You want to know an example of what happens if there's no shareholders? Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Yep. That's what happens when there's <laughs> yep. no shareholders. Yeah, that's what we were talking you about know, last like, time, yeah. Ter yeah, ter yeah. Ter ter terrible things happen, like really good games. Um, <laughs> but, terrible. This um, is terrible. Just terrible. It's terrible. But the reason a lot of shareholders get involved in games is because making games is so expensive and so risky that a lot of companies take the influx of cash so that they can make that next game. Because what Go is saying, like, say you make Diablo 4. Okay, it makes some money. It makes its money back, but that's not enough to run a studio. And you need to make the money back plus three years of game development for a second title. You need to make a next game with the money that Diablo 4 earns. So you need to out earn it at least 200%. And at the studios need their yachts too. That needs to be and accurate. Bobby Kotick needs money, like desperately needs money. A yacht's not going to um, gold plate itself, Rami. <laughs> no, it's tough. And then the other thing is uh, usually you don't just want to do one game. You want to be able to do that Diablo, but you always want to see if you can maybe put some riskier bets in, right? Like there was this golden age of EA where they were doing Mirror's Edge and Dead Space. And that was just, they had money. They had money available um, and that worked. But right now, like you can't just make back one game. Like you have to triple it, quadruple it. So uh, just because things are expensive. Yeah. Makes sense. Suppose it does. Remember hyenas? If I ask the three of you <laughs> to tell me what hyenas is, could you do the it? The next two words after that. Uh, yeah. There, is, isn't that the other word for shareholders? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. What, what no, I, the... Okay. No, so here's, it's funny you say that. Okay. Because when the news broke, as Probably we all saw people flood into our channel being like, hey, hyenas got canceled. Hyenas got canceled. I kid you not. Yeah. I had no idea what, what was being talked about the first time I saw it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much I the had norm. no clue. And yeah. then I looked into it and I was like, oh, oh, that game. Like, oh, dude, it's, it's lawbreakers all over again, man. Except on a grander scale. Yeah. Like it's, but it's, yeah, it's just, oh my Lord, dude. Uh oh, my Lord. Yeah, people, even right now, people in chat are saying, what, what is Hyenas? Yeah, so Hyenas was, uh, I'm reading from the wiki. I don't know this off the top of my head, at least not this well. Uh, it was the, quote, uh, science fiction first, per first person shooter uh, developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega. It was set in a dystopian near future where players take control of a space pirate known as a hyena and compete in teams of three to raid heavily guarded plunder ships. Uh, a hero-based multiplayer extraction shooter. Yeah, extraction shooters are gonna do. It's it, yeah. people really want this to happen. They're trying. People really, really want to be next Tarkov. They saw that Tarkov yeah. had this great success, but the the unfortunately the Tarkov devs were just in no position to kind of properly manage it. They're still having problems with it, and a a triple A wants to sweep in and take the crown. I mean, yeah. we had Dark and Darker. Have you seen the Dark and Darker ripoff game coming out? That it's Which one? Exactly so the many. same. I think it's called. Uh, I think it's called Greed is Good. Yeah. Or something. Okay. That's. I know um, that oh one, my yeah. god! It's like the same sound effects. It's like the same <laughs> graphics. I mean, Lyric was playing it, and I didn't real. I didn't look at the title. I dropped it. I thought it was playing Dark and Darker for like a solid few minutes before I was like, "Wait a second! Everything looks a little better." Like it was, it, which is kind of weird. But uh, yeah. Project Crawl is another one that's coming out. Like there's they're a, just there's a handful. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's a it's a thing, but and then dark and darker is still you know churning along in the background too. Yeah, so mm. it, uh, cycle frontier got yeah. Canceled. Well, I mean, like Picasso said, good artists borrow, great artists steal. It's true. Well, and they they <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess dark and darker kind of started that whole process allegedly, depending on what side you want to be on, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, it's just kind of a whole whole nightmare it's a whole nightmare there uh this is the uh the the creative assembly tweet um that went out uh i i i hate and this is like 
I this just reminded me of the of Office Space. Uh, the second that they say uh, we have made the incredible, incredibly difficult decision to begin a redundancy consultation process. <laughs> Fuck, fuck you, you man. Bro. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> oh, a redundancy console. Fuck Can you imagine that. when the head of the hyenas project was invited into a meeting to talk about the redundancy consultation process in your so, project? So, and they hit him with those. So, so what is it you say you do here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what so, is so, your game exactly? Yeah. For, for the record. Uh, usually European companies do this because there's a million and a half laws that will get you absolutely demolished if you fire people without without like, cause. cause. Yeah. Because that, that's not actually allowed like in Europe. So usually you'll get wording, but that means that they don't actually know whether their job loss is let yet, but they know it, it's going to happen or the company is going to go. So it, it's more of a like, we have to stick to the law. So they can't say they're laying off people, but they do, I think they just wanted to announce it alongside with the, but yeah, what a fucked up job title. It's like, it's like cost of living. It's another one of those phrases where every time I hear it, I'm like, wait, that makes me very depressed that that's a phrase. Like, right. Why, why is that a, why is yeah. that a thing? Cost of living. Yeah. 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 Mm. Right. You know what? Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right about that. I didn't even think about like, cost of living how, how dark that actually like comes yeah. across without context <laughs> can you imagine like you gotta calculate so your cost of living um yeah. everything yeah. like everything i have i will i will spend to live right some aliens showing up just being like so tell us about two random things that are happening well cost of living and redundancy consultation processes i didn't like that just like and goodbye yeah not a good time uh, Not a good time. Uh, I also right. like the fact that uh, quote we have always aimed to operate as a people first studio as our foundation to our values and culture. While we must go through this incredibly difficult process, we will continue prioritizing support, uh, supporting our people at every step. So, yeah, rough times. Really <laughs> simple. If I may segue, well. uh, I heard I heard you have some some news around me about your living situation. Is that true? Which one? <laughs> no, no. Like, did, did I heard you bought a house. Is that right? Yeah, I bought a house. I bought a house. You know, it's really hard to convince banks to give you a mortgage. You know, you're talking to you're three streamers, developer. right? Like, it's actually harder it for great. us. <laughs> it might actually be harder for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, so what do you do? I'm like, I, I, I make video games. They're like. Bye bye. I, it surprises me that that's difficult in 2023. Okay. Uh, I okay. feel like that would be so much easier. Because uh, I feel like at for least for us, streamers, you hear about famous ones. Yeah, I guess, but that, that well, but but it's I'm sure it's to the mortgage brokers. It's like telling someone you're an actor. You know, there are people who make a great living. You know, millions and millions of dollars right. acting. Yeah. But the lion's share of people who make video games or are actors or are artists of any kind. The lion's share of them make dick to zero. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you just say I software came to them engineer? And, I was like, and, and then they're just yeah, like, oh, I, okay. I tried that. And then I tried consultant, and that, that actually worked better. Yeah. They were a consultant. They didn't even ask what Which I Which is a fucking like, oh, bullshit okay. made up job to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But consultants are in the, um, um, uh, what is it? Pri the private sector, whatever they, right. you know, that, sure. that term. Yeah. It's like and you can, if you have if you are a consultant, that means you work in the private sector, which means you make a lot of money. Yeah. I do, uh, next time I'm just gonna true. go in. I'm just gonna go like I'm a redundancy consultant. Let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna yeah, no, just, it, just it took the joke to out of my mouth. I was gonna just just give them <laughs> that it. fucking business double speak jargon bullshit. Yep. Yeah. Speak the language. But uh, no, uh, it finally worked out. So I own a house. I am in the house right now, uh, but it's still transparent. To it all sounds like you need some furniture. Uh, with that echo, I going. do need some furniture. I need some furniture. I need some. I need some curtains. I need. I need a lot of things. But okay. it's my first week here, um, and it's the first time I own a house, so I'm just terrified. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. I guess that makes sense. Congrats. At least, uh, at least your house doesn't leak. It's, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Congratulations. I recommend. Thank you. Appreciate that. You no, still haven't leaked yeah, the house huge. issues, Co. Is that is that what that reference is? You to? know, they're they're mostly 
on. Man. <laughs> was that all uh, prior to you purchasing, the, or is this all new construction leaks, or what? Oh, mine? Yeah. Uh, yeah, combination of the house sitting around for many years without being tended to, and ah. construction issues, and then we had, you know, some major renovation issues that left us without a roof for about four months. Fun. Story for another time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, you can check out our uh, podcast about housing uh, and owning yeah. a house. Uh, still yeah. called Drop Frames, funny enough. Yeah. <laughs> as, as Jack can tell you, I now have this raging PTSD. Anytime I hear like a dripping sound in games, I'm like, <laughs> oh God, I don't, that sucks. I think I think Dropped is just a better name for the podcast now than as well. Yeah. This gonna, can we call it Dripped Frames? Drip oh, frames. don't do that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that's the segment no, it'll, that's be, it'll segment. be drop drip dripped beams housing <laughs> frames oh jeez oh jeez what is taking the next level called soggy foundation boom <laughs> there you go the ultimate one uh anyway rami you might know a little bit more about this i i thought maybe you don't because this is just like i think american uh, government pulled. the ftc is now challenging microsoft's buyout of activision again i yeah, I thought it was done, but according to the reports, they are planning to restart its in-house trial against Microsoft uh, acquiring Activision Blizzard. I mean, could be a ton of reasons, but like, uh, you know, the, I don't think they have, I don't think they were technically entirely done, but um, I, I would guess maybe sort of the situation changing in Europe was part of that. Uh, maybe some of the leaked information was, uh, you know, related to that, like, or, or like public uh, sentiment sort of turning, like, you never know. But um, I don't think it's a bad thing that this continues. Like, I think we need to be very careful with that merger, like, love the Microsoft teams, love the Blizzard teams, except for Bobby Kotick, he can go fuck himself. But like, <laughs> Um, and there's a bunch of others, but you know, like <laughs> most good people at Activision Blizzard, good people, but, um, yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's a really tough kind of, it's a really tough kind of merger. It is the largest one of its kind. It should, it should really, really, really be stuck with every regulation possible. Um, cause we need to make sure that this doesn't affect like Comp like competition in the games industry like right nobody is going to make another call of duty like ea has tried for how long it's and entire life like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, like it it tries it's they're great games but the, you know you can't really um you can't really say that we're at a spot where it would be really good for that company to go and be microsoft exclusive it just there needs to be rules here yeah uh in gadget uh, uh is reporting it says uh normally the ftc typically drops and challenges to deal uh to deals when efforts are lost in federal court uh, and despite the agency's effort this move will not delay the deal from going through the likely worst case scenario for microsoft would be uh divestiture uh, being forced to sell activision or parts of it after the fact would not be ideal but at least short term uh there seems to be little chance of the ftc derailing things right I mean, you know, ultimately, from from what I understand, um, and I think this has also been sort of said publicly, is like King is a huge part of this deal. Like that, sure. that's the that's the part that they care about, like very like clearly at this point. Um, but I don't think they would mind having Activision or Blizzard there as well. So you know, um, King's the money, man. but it's a weird time, right? It's it's weird. Like you sit here in the games industry and you're like, damn, Activision Blizzard and Microsoft is like, yeah, King. It's like, huh? Yeah. But it makes sense. That's where the money is. True. Yeah. What? What would King? I know King, King makes Candy Crush, but have they have they released anything else recently? Do Do they need to? Like Candy Crush makes more money than like probably what we earn multiplied. Yeah. Oh, uh, easy. game's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it does well without question. It, it makes some money every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other bit of news, and then we can jump into the um, the epic stuff. Uh, SAG after members 
who are still on strike in Hollywood, uh, approved the video game strike authorization vote with a 98.32% yes vote. So that means that they have approved the right for members to vote if they want to strike, I think. Is yeah, how I look and at that. there is some really strange conjecture going on around this, particularly there was like some VTubers who are making some public statements that I don't think they really understood like, oh, really? what was going on. Because they And basically what they're claiming is if this strike goes through, then streamers who are streaming the games okay. would be subject to what they're basically being asked not to do. Like, like they're, they're, it's, it's, this, it's this weird situation where they are claiming, I'm 99% sure erroneously, that these strikes would prohibit streamers from streaming some of these games that are under the umbrella of that strike. Um, I don't really understand how that functions, but I mean, this was like a, a huge tweet for a while that was going around. Mm. So let me see if I can find it to read the, the kind okay. of the verbatim stuff here. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can yeah, see what they're saying weird. from like uh, the idea of like crossing the picket line. Um, if Because uh, the, the three companies that they're, uh, the companies that would be affected are Activision uh, Productions, Inc., Disney Character Voices, Inc., Electronic Arts Productions, Epic Games, Insomniac, Take-Two, WB Games. Uh, and this uh, all have basically three companies that do subcontract work for motion capture and voice acting that uh, are entitled Blind Light LLC, Formosa Interactive LLC, and VoiceWorks Productions. Um, and that, respectively, is Bethesda, uh, Bungie, Square Enix, Rare, and Ubisoft for Blind Light. Formosa is Sony, uh, Activision, Kojima, Riot Games, and Hoyoverse. And then VoiceWorks uh, is Valve, Activision, EA, Take-Two, uh, as well as Ubisoft. So I guess there was the... Did you find the the tweet, Co? Were they basically saying that they didn't want to like cross the picket line by, scr by <laughs> streaming these games? Sort of. Okay. I, that was the premise of it. But again, the thing that didn't make mm -hmm. any sense to me is it's like we aren't we aren't members of the union. So why would that, like, how would that impact it? it I mean, as far as I understand, the only, the only way you would cross a picket line in that regard would that if the strike happened and then like, for instance, I've, I'm in a few games. Uh, when I've done any games on American soil, I've had to sign a waiver from SAG where it's basically them saying like, Hey, you're not a member of SAG, but you can do this with our blessing kind right. of thing, um, which is the normal procedure. I could not be in a game while this is going on, for instance because they would not give me that. And that would be me scabbing it like that. Of course, would get me in trouble if, if I were to be in a game during this. But as far as I know, outside of like, again, voice acting in the games, I don't see how streaming or exp it's kind of like the same as movies. Like yeah. if the, if the right. movies are already done and in production, then you can still go see them in the theater. So I, I'm not, not really quite understanding how it's, that whole thing yeah. works. I think it's more about just like solidarity uh, in, in that sense. Maybe. There's no like legal sure. thing that they could do really. Uh, in any well, yeah, thing. technically scabbing I mean, is not illegal either yeah. way, but yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, you know, the 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 idea of a strike, and I've worked with SAG after before on their previous strike actually when they were also striking in the games industry. Mm. Um, a, this is this is good, right? It's going to delay games, but it's going to make conditions for voice actors better. They're actually one of the better reimburse people in the games industry just because they have a union that can protect them. We don't. Um, that is our fault, not theirs. So we, we should 100 percent just for right. Yeah, we yeah, yeah game developers. Um, game developers don't. Um, that's our fault. We should get on that because clearly that's the way you deal with this. Um, the um, yeah, I, th I think I mostly agree with what Ko is saying. Like, you know, with these kind of things, the, the main thing to keep in mind is the union will tell will tell you what is right, what is wrong, right? Do not right. do not try and like think for the union. Do not try and think for the people in the strike. Here's the thing: Especially if it's not even happening, yeah, yeah. If exactly. there are if there are um, gigs, jobs, other things that become available as a result of the strike, do not take those jobs. That's scabbing. That's what they call scabbing. So yes, there will be a lot of voice actor positions available for people that are not a member of sag -AFTRA, and taking those jobs would basically screw over all the others. Yeah. Do not. Now's my chance. But, Let's go. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> not only would it um, screw over all the over all the others, but once the strike is done, SAG will never work with you. <laughs> right. You will um, be blacklisted. And, 
and the conditions in your industry that you're getting into will be worse because of what you did. So, you know, like you're basically undermining the strike. So scabbing don't, but like beyond that, really don't try to think for a union. Don't try to, to speak for a union. Like the union can speak on behalf of its members. That's a big process. There's like votes, there's like uh, negotiations, there's talks, there's, there's committees. Um, and like we saw with the WG, uh, WGA strike, like, ultimately they tend to be successful because they can yep. withhold the one thing that makes these companies money, which is work. So, um, just, you know, if you really want to be in voice acting, not now, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, when, when time's there, then, you know, join the union. That's always a good, always a good choice. And then go from there. Yeah. You gotta let the nanny cook. That's right. Chat. So I, I have found two references to the tweet I was talking about, and they're all linking back to deleted tweets. So I'm thinking that ah, guy was. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I do want yeah, to mention. The tweet those... about the potential strike was deleted. Thanks to everyone who corrected my misinformation. Foster support for it regardless. There it is. There it is. <laughs> okay. Easy. <clears throat> uh, do want to mention this before we jump into the epic stuff. Uh, Hideki Kamiya is leaving uh, Platinum Games. Uh, on October 12th uh, is what the, the company tweeted out. Um, it said, quote, we believe I, that he will continue to succeed in his future endeavors as a game creator. We are looking forward to seeing the game industry grow and to a better place with him in it. We wish him all the best for the future. He was one of the yeah, founders, the right? Like he, yeah. he was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he, he is, like for most people, he is planning them. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, I wonder what he what he goes and does next. What it, what his plans are uh, next? He he tweeted from his uh, his personal account, uh, and it's pretty much the same as announced on the official Platinum Games account. I'll be leaving Platinum Games October twelfth. Uh, this came after a lot of consideration based on my own beliefs, and was by no means an easy decision to make. However, I feel this outcome is for the best. I will continue to create in my Hideki Kamiya uh, way. I hope you will keep your eyes peeled. So it sounds like he's oh. already got plans. New head of PlayStation right there. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that would make for such cool first party games. Let's yeah. go. Everything's just going to turn into like a oh, third person done. action game. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Hack and slash everything. Yeah. Hack and slash everything. What, uh, what was his Twitter? Uh, PG underscore uh, K-A-M-I-Y-A. Fun thing, even if you've never checked his Twitter account, go to his Twitter account and see if you're blocked because this guy blocks like nobody's business. Really? Yeah, it was great. Like, if you ever had opinions on anything, you have like a 40% shot that you're blocked. <laughs> you could say the weather is bad and you're blocked. It's great. Uh, I don't his... know, did I, did, I, did I actually get blocked in the end? I'm not blocked. His, uh, his, his Twitter banner is pretty hilarious. This is what he has as his Twitter banner. <laughs> so it's literally about blocking people. Uh, yep. <laughs> I block foreign language posts, of course, including English. Yeah. That lures a lot of insects to block. Very yeah. funny to see. What a repeat for insects? He calls the people he blocks insects? He actually kind of is. is <gasps> wow. The, those tweets are reminiscent of like a Devil May Cry villain. In a lot of ways, yeah. <laughs> they read like they were straight out of Devil May Cry. If you ever Be careful, this, insects which don't understand language and are never going to care about what tweets are and just post with. Dude, this guy sounds like an actual villain. Yeah. Wow. Am I blocked? So no, none I'm of us blocked. are blocked. No. None of us are blocked. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Wow. We're not. We don't have enough opinions. Enough. Funny enough, though, if we were to at him and say something along the, along the lines of "Hey, what's going on in English?" from the sounds of it, we would instantly be blocked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's got a bot or something for it. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Chatter says he blocked Platinum right after he quit. <laughs> 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 I don't funny. know if that's true, but that will be really funny. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. If that's and blocked! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is pretty good. I mean, I'm sure. I heard he's an avid drops drop frames viewer, so I think we're all going to be blocked by the end of the show. It might be. <laughs> yeah. 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 The show is in English. Sorry, y'all. Yeah. Oh, done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Should have done it in Japanese. 
Uh, uh, let's talk it. about this Epic Games stuff. Uh, Jason Schreier, I think, was the one to break the news on the 28th uh, of September, which was this past Thursday um, at about 10 a.m. is when the news broke. Um, 16% of Epic uh, Games was uh, laid off around 900 player, uh, 900 people. Um, I know, like I was mentioning in the beginning of the show, a lot of them were influencer and uh, community folk. Uh, Rami from the dev, what I hate saying from the dev side of things, from the software engineer side of things, like what, uh, who, who was targeted here? We know Mediatronic, um, I think had a large portion of, uh, folks, uh, that were let go, yeah. if not the biggest portion. Uh, but what else yeah. have you, you heard about that? I mean, basically across the company, there's layoffs, like entire teams are gone. Uh, a lot of the education team is gone, which is wild because if there was ever a time to get people onboarded onto Unreal, it is right after oh. Unity absolutely shits the bed. Yeah. Um, but nope. Um, the um, um, I've seen layoffs in, in some of the development positions. Like you said, uh, the core team seem mostly safe. Uh, which means like the engine teams, things like that. But um, even there, uh, a lot of a lot of people let go. Some like veterans uh, are gone. Uh, there used to be a guy named uh, David over at uh, Epic, David Stelzer. Um, he was everybody's contact into Epic. Like if you were a developer and you were talking to Epic, you were talking to David, like there's no way around it. He, he's gone. Yeah, uh, That was like a shock. Like if you watched his LinkedIn, it was just people being like, you uh, like you know just across the board like phenomenal people like honestly legends in the industry are just out um small large veteran like junior like it feels like a thanos snap hmm. like just like it almost feels random like there, there's no rhyme and reason and there's like incredible people in localization teams audio teams uh some programmers artists like all sorts are gone it's it's yeah, a decimation is a is a good word. <laughs> yeah, um, um, like that's one in five, just for the record. Like at Epic, right? Like that, that's bonkers. That means you just go back to work, and like one in every five desks is empty. One of every five people is gone. Slack is down. Right. Fuck that letter. Fuck that letter in particular. Yeah, I was gonna bring it up because I, I was curious for, on your thoughts on it. it <laughs> there's my yeah, so we got say, there's the thoughts we got the thoughts uh <laughs> it uh like, yeah uh, all right let, let me just let me just for a while now we've been spending way more money than we earn investing in the next evolution of epic and growing fortnite as a metaverse inspired ecosystem for creators i have long been optimistic that we could power through this transition transition without layoffs but in retrospect i see that this was unrealistic if you fucked up then it's on you punish yourself yeah yeah uh, why Jeff, is one Jeff fifth Grubb. of the company gone yeah. Jeff Grubb put up a tweet where he's like, you know, it's pretty clear that you are, you have taken responsibility in some ways for these layoffs. So why aren't you cutting your own salary? And then he added, right. totally. Tim Sweeney. He was like, what's, right. what's going on here? Like, why are you still getting paid the same amount and you're cutting these people? Yeah. And, and uh, weirdly and he, enough, he didn't, Tim Sweeney didn't respond. Um, strange. Strange. Yeah. Grub, Grub's got but a like, lot of clout. Yeah, it's not <laughs> So Tim goes and goes like, hmm, I was optimistic, but I was unrealistic. Anyway, you know what the real problem is? Creators. Yeah, that next uh, paragraph is is uh, also interesting. Um, so so while, while Fortnite is starting to grow again, the growth is driven primarily by creator content with significant revenue sharing. And this is a lower margin business than we had when Fortnite Battle Royale took off and began funding our expansion. Success with the creator ecosystem is a great achievement, but it means a major structural change to our economics. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, I'm sorry. That's a fun, way to, that's a fun way to say layoffs. <laughs> major structural changes Shh. to our economics. Specifically, um, your paychecks. That's yeah. the change. Well, so, the change someone is in my chat made a you. good point and said, it looks like Epic needs a redundancy consultant. They do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I will say, like, the whole chat GPT, AI, NFT, like, all of that bullshit, I don't think there's any good use for it, but I'll make one exception. I think, in general, every bad decision that has happened in the last few months, if you ask, would this be a good idea from a CEO level? Would laying off 16% of Epic Games be a good idea? The chat GPT does a better job at saying, like, you know what? Maybe I should just cut my own salary. The only Do you good realize use for AI. how, like, don't get me wrong. Tim Sweeney probably literally has a mattress full of hundred dollar bills. Like he, he's got that just is the amount he's already publicly out there saying that his decisions in many ways led to these layoffs. Do you realize what would have happened if he would have been like publicly, Hey, I'm reducing my own pay. We're going to keep jobs. We would have normally cut. And we're going to try to keep working with this. You know, I'm sorry about this. I've made a blunder. We're over the next few years. We're going to make adjustments for now. I'm the one that's going to take the hit while we figure out how this is going to work. Like the, the PR that that would have gotten, sure. He would have gotten less money, but shareholders probably wouldn't have been too affected by him losing his own paycheck. Like it, I can't imagine any less than this. Although I have to say that that, that brings me to an interesting question. Do shareholders like this? No, do they like seeing this or does, do they not like seeing oh, this? They, they show, like, Cheryl, they oh, like seeing love the layoffs. layoffs. <laughs> even love with layoffs. all the negative, Jeez. even with all the negative PR that oh, comes to the, the delicious, company. delicious. They can, they, oh. they, they like, what was it JP said last time? Just like rubbing, the, just rubbing their own like chest oh, with like dollar nipple, bills. Nipple like that. Yeah. I'm not going to say that, but JP can say it, but like that. <laughs> That yeah, they just love like they, they shareholders love that because I'm sure it just means more money. Up. Yeah, it means um, more money but, back in the pool, right? That that's yep that's, uh, for but yeah more product here, uh, more chance um, of money blah blah blah. We're also making some divestitures. Bandcamp is joining Song Trader. Super Awesome's advertising will become independent. Uh, Kids Web Services, the brand verification, and constant management tools oh, will remain no. part of Epic. They kept that one. Um, well, yeah. Saying goodbye to people who have built Epic is a terrible experience for all. Uh, real quick, <clears throat> Julia just clued me onto this. You should, uh, you should pop that tweet, JP, up real quick, and then oh, his yeah. reply, his reply to it. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh my Lord, dude. Here's the tweet in question. Uh. I'll, I'll show the image. Uh, and Tim Sweeney tweeted this out and said, tech company management during a recession. And then look at the first reply. And then the first reply From says, Tim Sweeney. Uh, let me pull that down. And it says, epic during recession. So, good going there, Tim. Good job, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Really? Good job. Uh, well, how long ago was that tweeted? <laughs> uh january 26th what is that basically saying basically like basically tim ago. was saying that epic was such a strong company and 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 so cohesive that during the recession that you know they were fine while everyone else was having so many problems and then here we are later and they're you know ditching double digits of their workforce due to poor decision making yeah anyway just a few more things from that letter that i think are ex actually really shit Sure. Um, yeah. So um, we'll provide benefits, including to re career transition services and visa support where we can for those in the US that are there under a work visa. This starts a timer that is less than a few months to find a new job. It's six months, right? Is, is what it is, or is it less? Depends than that? on depends on the visa and the situation. But yeah, up to six months. Yeah. If you don't get a job before that, and getting a job in games right now is hard, you're out. And for a bunch of folks, that would not be good, right? So I already have a bunch of developers that are like, well, we need a job now. So, you know, they're in my DMs. Um, and, you know, like, it's a terrible experience for all. Like, Tim Sweeney wants you to know that it's really bad for him, this whole situation. Like, he really feels you know, bad about it. He's it gonna... He feels terrible. Yeah. Um, and then, um, um, where was it? Uh, Is that the work cutting uh, cost line? Oh. I'm just going to read this whole thing. Okay. 
Because fuck them. Oh, actually, um, <laughs> this one as well. Uh, we've built the best engine in the world and we'll be hosting Unreal Fest next week to bring the community together and spotlight the things they're building with Unreal Engine and UE UEFN. I don't know if you've read, but like a large part of that team is laid off. Really? The, the people running that event are obviously in their influencer and events stack. That, yeah. That's gone. Team yeah. is gone. It's evaporating. There was uh, a woman in that team tweeting that the show must go on, but the, the team is gone. They don't have the resources. They they can't. They they can't. And then the people uh, for a lot of these events, especially on the esports side, a lot of the esports folks that are at events like that are celebrating the layoffs. From a layoff yeah. perspective, how how does six months base pay stack up? Out of curiosity, within the game industry specifically, you can see there in the uh, the above paragraph. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. For offering yeah, a severance it, package, it includes six months base pay in the U.S., Canada, Brazil, six months of paid healthcare. Like, is that how how does that stack up normally? It, it's it's pretty okay. Like the bigger one is the uh, stock option vesting for uh, for folks uh, that have stock options. If you've been there for a while, that can actually be a, a decent amount of money. Yeah. Um, so that's a fairly good one. Like a lot of the people are going to be financially fine for the next few months, but with the industry right now, it's tough to say whether you're going to get a job in six months. And if your visa depends on it, that's, and that's rough. Yeah. Another side question, um, as someone who has a lot more experience with this kind of stuff than us, what, what do you, is, is that last line meaningful? Career transition services and support? Really yeah. Can? Is that just, is that, is that actually something positive and good or is that just pr speak it is pr speak but it does help it basically means that they're going to be working with the people that are laid off to you know just sure headhunter services ready for. right yeah headhunter yeah. services recruiting services but also uh, often resume uh review stuff like that portfolio checkups uh, consultancies that kind of stuff honest truth 90 percent of the time people won't have any benefit with this because they'll they'll either have a new job lined up or they're going to be in the grinder for the next six months hoping that they find something before they get kicked out to whatever country where they're not they're going to have a good life right um and then um um we're cutting costs without breaking development except for that event of course or our core lines of business so fuck everybody else uh, so we can continue to focus on our ambitious plans and actually everybody else can literally go screw themselves. About two thirds of the layoffs were in teams outside of core development, which means one third was, that's 300 people, just for the, just to be clear, that's 300 people gone. Yeah. Some of our products and initiatives will land on set schedule and some may not ship when planned because they're under resourced for the time being. We're okay with the schedule trade-off. <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, hey guys, if it hey means guys, they're okay with it. <laughs> we're, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, if it means holding on to our ability to achieve our goals. And here's the part where I just want to just, if it means holding on to our ability to achieve our goals, get to the other side of profitability and become a leading metaverse company. Tim, you literally started this letter saying you fucked up on the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. But now they're literally gonna... the start of this letter is we fucked up. Metaverse did not work. <clears throat> they love the metaverse, you know? Lily laid off 900 people because of a fuck up he did. And he ends the letter with, I'm actually, we're going to continue to fuck up. Does metaverse. Fire this man. Does, does metaverse mean something different to. Does metaverse mean Fortnite? Let's, let's, let's back it up even more. What exactly is a metaverse company? Well, that's what what does that to, yeah. even mean? That's a good question. Like, does right. that. Does I mean it doesn't mean obviously you're gonna be a part of the the dumb meta metaverse marketplace thing. It's not a VR game. I mean, it's not what like that the mean? meta like Facebook yeah. meta. It's it's more. I <laughs> so here's here's the idea. The idea is that about <laughs> somebody goes is it GTA Online. Is that what they mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Close, honestly. Somewhat, right? <laughs> you know. Uh, a few decades ago, somebody came up with this brilliant idea that, and it was called HTTP. It's a protocol. It's a protocol on which the entire internet runs. Well, there's a bunch of other ones, like, for example, streaming video goes over RT, uh, RMTP. Uh, there's FTP. There's SSH, there's a bunch of protocols yeah. that allow you to communicate. The nice thing about a protocol is that it's not really owned by a major company in general, and 
what it does is it allows everybody to write code in a specific way that can interact with each other. So HTTP is lovely. It is decentralized. Nobody owns HTTP. You can put it on any computer. Anybody can connect to that computer and render out that HTTP with a, with a browser. It's great. So we've had HTTP for a while now. And over time, people started realizing like, oh my God, owning the protocols is worth a lot of money. Facebook started doing Web2, right? Web2 owned and suddenly like for Twitter, Facebook, all these companies started collecting data and that became the new ecosystem. It was data, ads, um, uh, data collection, that kind of stuff that started earning money. So then somebody realized like, what if there was a Web3? What if there was VR came out, all of that stuff started happening. And there was this idea that it was like, what if there was a new protocol that we built, specifically we, the company that is thinking this, what if we built the next protocol and now everybody has to use that? And then we will build into that, thanks to blockchain and NFT and digital scarcity and that kind of stuff. We will build that into the protocol and we'll just skim off like 3%. So what if we can make the entire future economy run on our platform? Ready player one, effectively, right? And the thing is, it's stupid. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is it's stupid because when HTTP happens, Nobody realized that that thing was going to make infinite money. That was not that was not the consideration. People were making a bunch of scientists made it to be like, oh my god, we can send text from this computer to that computer. Imagine if we could send it to any computer, right? But what happened now is everybody already realizes that made, this makes money, which is why we'll never have a Netflix of video games. We'll never have a Netflix of video games because everybody realizes this makes money. Game Pass is the closest we're going to get. That's already under fire from everyone. And that's because they're buying everyone <laughs> and buying the licenses for everyone. Yeah, they're, they're, right? they're using the money to make the money. Yeah. So everybody already makes this, but basically what Unreal wants to do, they want to say like, okay, we're going to make Fortnite into the, we're going to use Elon Musk speak here, the everything app. Elon Musk X is trying to turn into the everything app, which is a metaverse. Fortnite, Unreal wants to turn it into and everything app. Meta literally rebranded itself. It wants to become the everything app. Like basically it's the idea that they own the way we send money. That's what they want to own. Um, and they own the way we communicate and they own the way we interact. They own where digital scarcity is created. So they basically want to make the internet worse and then force us to pay for it. That's metaverse. And that would make infinite money. Literally infinite. Everything would have to go through them. So for a lot of these CEOs, they're just going like, 3% of everything, maybe we so should invest. When yeah. Tim Sweeney is saying that he wants to make his company a metaverse company, he's saying he wants Epic and Fortnite and all those to basically be like a direct competitor to all these other things. Like he's trying to stage himself as like, look, we're one of these two kind of things. He, he wants the or others. Or he want to be a part of one of those? He wants everybody else to require his services to do things. So he wants to go, okay, oh. you want to continue Facebook? Oh, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. That's cute. We have Fortnite. You want to continue Facebook? You should build it in Fortnite. That's what all these companies are trying to do. Build it in mm. our thing. That's what Meta is trying to do. That's what uh, Fortnite is trying to do. Because like the idea of a metaverse doesn't work if there's multiple. There's, yeah, there that's not how to, there, there's not that, multiple. It's, that's what I was going to ask was, was like, when when streaming services were like Netflix and Hulu and that was it or or you know name name the ones that were first but now it's like so many of them the water is so goddamn muddy that every like all of them are losing money this or is... not making as much money as they as they want to or whatever so that seems like what's happening here with the metaverse and it seems like uh either one person wins or nobody wins yeah this is one, scarily one, one parallel to like the corporations and cyberpunk. I was about to like say, we're going to talk about cyberpunk yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's the exact same premise where it's like these yeah, companies absolutely. just rise up to become entire, you know, your, your life is pledged to one of them essentially. And you become, you know, the, the numbered employee of that. And then your whole life is based out of that. And they all compete against each other. 
So what I'm trying to say is I wonder when Meta and Epic are going to war. The fight over Have you ever seen when does, when does Have you ever happen? seen the movie Library Wars? Mm -mm. What is Library? It's a Japanese movie I came across. Like it is crazy. Uh, library Wars the last mission. I saw that on an airplane once. It was great. It was like the government fights libraries. Huh. And like libraries Oh, we can call try that the keep... south here. Oh. <laughs> Mate, that movie went hard. That movie went way hard. I fucking love that movie. But that's what I'm imagining. It's like there will be some sort of regulated war where it's like, okay, we'll start at three and we'll be done at five. And after that, it's layoffs. You know, that, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, my, I'm still adjusting. Chat, calm down. I'm Southern. It's chill. I, yeah. can, I can joke about myself. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Chill out, y'all. We good. <laughs> All right. yeah. I'm surprised they're not like with you. They're like, yeah, fuck books. <laughs> <laughs> that's my line, Zeke. That's uh, what do you sell my, my old, That's my thing. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, anyway. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that one. Sounds that sounds uh, fun in quotes. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun. The sad reality that our sad potential reality, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, uh, if you have that letter one more time, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just very slowly scroll down to the absolute bottom of this? No, yeah, that's too far. The absolute <laughs> bottom of the text. Thanks. This. Yeah. Right. Can, you, can you read that last one just for fun? Uh, what about Project Liberty? We've been taking steps to reduce our legal expenses. Uh, but are continuing the fight against Apple and Google distribution monopolies and taxes so the metaverse can thrive and bring opportunity to Epic and all other developers. Now, wait, does that it, is now, does... fucking hilarious. They're like, we don't want these other monopolies. We want us to be the monopoly, doy. Also, wait a second. Terminology wise, this this kind of throws things for a loop. So, so the metaverse can thrive and bring opportunities to Epic. So he's it's insinuating that the metaverse is not Epic, that it's an independent entity that Epic is a part of, which I would then that's assume that they, there are other people part of the metaverse too. That's what they all say. Like Facebook, Facebook meta, sorry. Meta also says like, oh, we're creating the metaverse. Yeah. And it's separate oh, okay. from meta. So what but they like, actually mean is their metaverse. They're just not yeah. saying the quiet part out loud. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that, so, yeah, the, they the corp, they're, they're playing the corpo route there. This okay. line, the fact that this is in here makes it frames this entire post to just be like, this is not, I don't give a shit about people on the internet. I, this is for our shareholders. This is literally yeah. for the shareholders I mean, and no one else. That's who this was I written mean, for. Again, like, let me let me remind you, the, the second paragraph starts with, for a while now, we've been spending way more money than we earn investing in the next evolution of Epic and growing Fortnite as yeah. a metaverse-inspired ecosystem for creators. Metaverse-inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think Tim, Tim Sweeney has some remarkable talents, right? Incredible programmer. Um, clearly has run Epic to be what it is now but this metaverse man i i can't tell you it blinds these people to a degree i've never seen before like smart people that just start seeing like they stop seeing reality it's like <laughs> it's it's weird it's like because everybody in the company will go like how how about we just how about we don't spend more than we earn on this? like what what fucking idiot takes a comp I'm, and I'm sorry Tim but like seriously who takes <laughs> who takes a company as profitable as epic and somehow outspends it yeah on a thing like the metaverse like why is this not a small experimental branch in epic that can be like made independent of the company take some of your best talent create that protocol outside of epic make it independent make it interoperable make it available to anybody make it open source put it out there why not that if you really want the metaverse if you care so much about the world having this new layer of things build it right don't build it as part of a massive corporation and spend billions 
burn half your comp, burn a fifth of your company down. What the fuck is happening, man? Like, come on. Can, like, this is this just, ain't it. Can I just throw out here, Rami Ismail calling one of the biggest, most powerful people in the industry an effing idiot, but will not say nipple rubbing. <laughs> <laughs> I have my lines, okay? Yeah, he's, he's got, got his, his lines, look, man. Can't, he's got his I lines. Can't say he doesn't have any morals. Right? He's, he's Astaghfirullah. Kind of... Astaghfirullah. I'm like, Allah is my witness. Like, like we, I will not say that. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's just like, I don't get it. I don't get how you start that letter. So I'm like, we might have fucked up on Metaverse. Anyway, now that we've laid off all these people, we can continue investing in metaverse and also we have this project liberty thing going on so we can build more metaverse i'm like oh. yeah well in 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 your estimation uh rami is is fortnite hit its like z like the apex of of what it can do and what it can actually like become and so now they're gonna now they're they're throwing unreal to kind of become the next big deal with with the metaverse tie-in is that the, I mean, the goal ultimately? Unreal is a weird one because it's it's grown so much. The opportunity of Unreal is enormous, but like you know, the the I think we're, we've we've not seen the last of Fortnite. Like that thing is still doing incredibly. Well, oh, it well. still does incredibly well. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Right. But I I don't know but, I don't know where they go next though. Like they're already at the tippity top. That, that's kind of it. Like, I think they're seeing this as a, a growth opportunity. Now, the, the weird thing about, you know, Unreal um, and Tim is that um, Unreal is kind of a, a unicorn in that way, right? Like, it's it's Epic. Um, what? How is Epic done nowadays? Epic has, um, was it Tencent? Was it NetEase? I think Tencent has ownership, or uh, I think a small yeah. percentage. So, so, it's 40% Tencent, 5% oh, Sony, and 3% uh, Kirkby, and then Tim, over 50. Yeah. Tim owns majority share. majority share of that company. He doesn't have yeah, to do Yeah, so this about shit. firing Tim, yeah, that's never going to happen, yeah. unfortunately. That's the thing. Like, but he doesn't have to do this. This was not necessary. Th these 900 jobs did not have to go. And the thing I keep trying to tell people, and this is to, to your point earlier on, on like a good year. Do we have time for that? Do you want to take it? Like, I don't know, like how this, how we're going to do this, but like, this is a rant. I have, let's I have do like it. a few minute rant. Coming. Let's hear it. Let's do it. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Uh, All right, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. This is a bad year for video games. There's a bunch of good releases, right? But like I, I, I explained this earlier to somebody on, on Twitter mm. and you know how sometimes you have like a, the, oh wait a i meal. meant somebody by the way yeah you have that meal <laughs> and it's a delicious meal but then you like just have explosive diarrhea for a week straight after it yeah that's not a good meal right like it tasted good but also you had explosive diarrhea for a week afterward like i i would never say like oh my god i had this amazing meal i'll go like mate i ate this shit it tasted delicious but it, it gave me explosive diarrhea for a week right that's 2023. 2023 for video games is delicious taste. Baldur's Gate, uh, I liked Armored Core, Final Fantasy, like what? Just like bangers, like back Absolutely, to back. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Great video. Just staggering level of quality, right? But the shit that's happening right now is going to fuck games up from 2025 to 2028. Like that period of time. Yeah. And we were talking earlier is like Baldur's Gate 3, the reason that exists is because people that are good at a thing got time to specialize in a thing at a place with a team. They got better at making games together. All these teams are getting ripped up, right? This talent is get, being lost. People that were working at Epic for one thing or at Creative Assembly or at like any of the other companies that are having layoffs because Ubisoft had layoffs. Like every, everybody's having layoffs. Every single one of those people is now losing that bit of stability, that bit of teamwork together, right? So between Unity creating instability, Unreal creating instability, all these layoffs happening, the economy taking a, like just a shit and then all these companies reacting to it with layoffs. 
you know how many great games have just died? Like Embrace you know how... was talking about like the amount of titles that haven't even been announced they've had to cut. And I mean those could have been some of our favorite yeah, IPs that we're looking forward to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Next day X could be gone. We never even heard of it. This is this is but it's not just those. It, it's not just the games that were already potentially being made. It's the games that would have been made if the people that work together got to work together for two, three more games. Right. And to read because like the weird thing about games is like on most games, the first like 30% of development is just the team getting used to each other. You know, that, that's the first part of the game. And like after you've done it two or three times, you know who you depend on. You're like, oh shit, I need this done. Let me talk to that person. Let me talk to this girl. Let me talk yeah, there's to like guy. a sense of to... camaraderie with it. You know, you know, like, oh, we need this. Oh shit. Well, if we drop it with them, then and that's how Larian makes the Baldur's Gate 3. It's because they instantly know, because they've been working together, they have that culture, they know who to talk to, they don't have shareholders breathing down their neck. They've got a strong They're just leader. making the game. They have, a, they have a direction, they stick to that direction. And thus, for over 20 years, is 20 years? It's 20 years. Pretty much 20 years, I think. Yeah. They have had that direction, that team, building towards Baldur's Gate 3. From the start, the dream was making a game like Baldur's Gate 3. And they just hired up. They built that culture. They built that team. They built that knowledge. And they kept it. I think they would have rather sank the studio than laid off people. Right? And that's how you build that. The amount of games like that that have now just been evaporated. Teams that have been evaporated, people that have lost their jobs, and a lot of people are not going to find a job in the games industry right now because the games industry is shrinking. A lot of shit's gone, and I can see it. You know, I I hear stories about like people that were like, oh, you know, we were going to do a game, but like, not there anymore. Like, you know, or team is getting split up, or like we had ideas. And you know, the worst part, leadership, they're going to be fucking careful. Nobody's going to invest in a risky game right now. A good game? No, that's risky, man. Build, build another thing that will make some money. Come on, shit. Like, do something by the numbers, please. You know? That's for the next two, three years. Because the teams are gone. I don't know if they can do a quality new, like, you know, innovation is risky. Yeah. You know what's not risky? Good thing we already did, but again. So this year is like fucked up games for like the past, for the next three to five years. That's terrifying to me. Now, obviously, there's hope, right? It's not entirely doomed, but like, I don't think this is necessarily like a good year for games. I think this is one of the roughest years for games that has happened. Not just because people say like, no, no, it's a rough year for the games industry. No, it's a rough year for games. Because this is what decides what's going to come out in 25 to 2028. You know what was a good year for games? 2021. That's what we're playing now. Sure. 2020, 2021, those were great years for games. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I feel like uh, I feel like it's kind of it's dialectical semantics in a lot of way, because I think a lot of the public sees it as a process to product terminology, where okay. it, this year is a good year for games because this year had a lot of amazing amazing releases. This year was a terrible year for game dev. The process, okay. the fact that it was a terrible year for game dev means that. The following years are going to be bad for games. They're going to be bad, yeah. So it's like it's like two different parallel things: games and game right. dev. So I think when you yeah. say it's a bad year for games, that immediately a ton of gamers are going to go, "But wait, no!" Oh yeah. I, I, <laughs> so it's like it's, it's like it, 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 it opens yeah. the door to an interesting conversation. But and I and for the record, I agree with everything you just said. I mean, I'll, the next few years are going to be rough, and yeah. and arguably how those years go may make the next years even rougher. So, yeah. you know, so it's the kind of situation where game dev in a lot of ways is going to kind of like a seed to a plant, like because of this bad game dev, we are going to now like grow multiple years of bad game games yep. years. Um, but I will say like, cause I'm one of the people that have said this and just to kind of like de slightly defend my side of it. I still feel that this year has been an amazing year for games, but a terrible year for game dev. Um, right. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a differentiation that I feel is minor and kind of semantical, but also kind of important. You know, to show yeah. that you actually, yeah. Because <laughs> if anyone were to say this is a good year for game dev, I feel like that's where you kind of got to step in and be like, okay, wait. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Hold on. For any of you out there 
who are feeling like FOMO or whatever about the, all the games coming out recently backed up. Like I got this book. Savor it, stretch it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's interesting because someone, someone take your time with Baldur's Gate, take your time with Starfield and Final Fantasy and all armor. No rush. Take Whoops. your time with it because <laughs> next year you're going to be looking for something. So don't rush. Just, just, just enjoy what you got. Someone in chat brought up a very good point where they just said, you know, thankfully this year was so good for games that I'm going to be playing this year's games for the next five years. And it's yeah. kind of like, hey, if you're somebody who plays a few hours a week because you got work, job, life, you know, it's like, that's great. That's really good. I mean, you, just, you know, we still got Rogue Trader at the end of the year if you need an extra 200 hours of CRPG. But uh, but no, overall, like, and, and most importantly for the pipelines, because a lot of this stuff is yeah. structured around consistent pipelines. And a lot of those pipelines are just gone or they're choked. So it's kind of like the whole the whole process is, is just a mess. It's yeah. a mess. I think that is kind of the point I'm trying to make. Like, I, for me, one of the, the the most valuable things in talking to folks that that play games is to let them know just how how they get made, right? And and how the sort of like how things connect. So when I say it's a bad year for games, I, I mean that it's just those games aren't out yet. Yeah, but those games are gone, point. destroyed, yeah. like evaporated. And like to me, if I look at the net result of 2023, there's a bunch of amazing games there, but it killed so many. Sure. Kills so many games that, you know, for me, that is kind of like one of the, the parts I always try to sort of impart on people. It's like this industry, you don't feel things for two years. Like 2024 might still have great games and people are going to come, come to my tweet and be like, nope, you were wrong. 2024 are still great. And I'm like, yeah, because those games were greenlit in 2021. They're, they're bleeding over from 2023. Yeah. The first, the first few yeah. months, especially of 2024, are going to be great. Yeah. But then it then it starts getting a little bleak as you look more into it. <laughs> E3 <laughs> season's going to be very well. I I guess honestly, we'll be starting up like the new console cycle in 2025 or 2026, right? So some some letters on the internet suggest net, 2026. Yeah, net, next year I guess is the switch if those rumors are to be believed. So we might even be getting new hardware by then. Um and those years are always lean to begin with. Yeah, Rami, you don't say anything here. Just, just keep looking around. <laughs> yeah. those, those uh those are always kind Rami of Rami like years flipping to begin with. gets out gets out his binder of NDAs, starts like flipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. I, I I agree full uh full heartedly though. Like it's gonna be a the the back half of next year will be odd especially after this year yeah. this is one of the is like a content creator which is not i wouldn't say it's is a normal video game player because we play games in a very s compact amount of time compared to the average person this year has been fucking crazy like i haven't had a you i don't i can't recall a year doing this almost 13 years now where it's been like holy shit i have another i have another I have three games right now that I want to be jumping into at any given moment. Uh, that hasn't happened really, I, I, at least not for me. I think every creator is different, but oh yeah, I we'll be feeling it next stars, year, man. Yeah, yeah. I play ten hours of games every single day, and I can't keep up. Like my yeah. God, dude. We will feel it next year, though, without question. Oh yeah, we will. There will be oh, yeah. months of time where it's like. What do you guys uh, been playing? <laughs> My answer would be like, I'm playing anything? League, guys. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing some Valorant. Thank right? God for the Poe two. Come on, Poe two, <laughs> save us. Yeah, all right. We're jumping into Poe two. All those, all those games and services. Yeah. <sighs> we will see. We'll have to see what happens. You know, it leaves space for the indies. Which, which that I do believe. Like India is less affected to this, and I think there will. Oh, they be a will. Lot it'll of rise. Incredible indie games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um there's uh, one right now that uh has been making the rounds uh cocoon have you have you played through that yet rami no i haven't but it's on my it's on my to do uh, i've kind of been moving houses so I've you've been a little busy barely hooked up my playstation yeah, but, yeah i've, uh, I've yeah. seen a, a bunch of people ranting at how good cocoon is it's kind of like a puzzle ish 10 hour um game and they're all saying it's fantastic so it's uh, it's i played through it it's actually about four to five Oh, okay, yeah. great. Oh, oh, I didn't know you played through it. We'll talk about it then uh, later yep. in the show. No, for I, sure. I, I want to hear about it. It was suggested on any day, and I ended up like, usually I get through it like between four and five games, 
and I got to three. I got to Cocoon, and I was like, uh, I'm going to finish this, guys. <laughs> Great. I'm excited to hear about that. Um, yeah, going, going back to the rant, I, I don't want to, uh, to end the rant prematurely. or I want you to get your full thoughts out there, Rami. So if you have anything else to say on uh, the topic of well, this I mean, year and, and everything. I will say 2024, I think, is still going to be um, good on the indie side. I think 2025 is also going to be really rough on the indie side because indie games usually get made on a two-year cycle, where AAA usually gets made on a three-year cycle. Mm. So, um, Oh, and especially with Unity. Indies, yeah, with the Unity thing, but also um, with the economy taking a, a, you know, a, a nosedive. Um, th- there's a weird saying <clears throat> that money is expensive right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting the funds for a video game hard practically yeah. impossible right now like I'm seeing games where like in 2021 I would have you know because I I scout for for a lot of publishers and I uh, I help a lot of the de- developers get connected to publishers and funders and there are games that in 2021 I could have gotten two to seven like mil for um that now you know 300k um and there are games where you're just like if this came out it like it would it would be a thing it would definitely be a thing but like it's just it's too risky so 2025 i think we're gonna we're gonna feel we're gonna feel some things unless the um, the platforms have some big stuff set up for those years so yeah um you know uh microsoft sony nintendo if they have stuff might still end up being a good year otherwise inshallah (laughs) you know yeah we'll see we'll see what happens anyways That that's been so your uh, right now. Yeah, yeah. That this has been your depressing Rami uh, hour. Uh, yeah. Thank you for tuning yeah. in. Uh, hey, it's good to know. I mean, this this is the kind of stuff that you know you should you should be aware of if nothing else as a gamer and it can you know can help. Can help. Yeah. Well, especially after like again, I think that people are riding the high right now uh, of the industry because yeah. there is just so much to play uh, and so much good stuff to play. If if people want to do anything. Because I get that question a lot. What, what do can we, we do as consumers? How, yeah. how do we help as consumers? Honestly, the, the honest truth is, you know, keep, keep buying games. That always helps. Um, you can also install them again, even if they're Unity games, because you shouldn't be backtracked the hell out of that one. Yep. Um, yeah, we went through their whole yeah. fluffle last week. Uh, <sighs> it's still messed up, but, you know, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, but... Um, the, thing, the, the main things you can do is, you know, let in polite but no uncertain terms no when these games come out that you know what you're looking for is not the same game over and over again um like reward risk if somebody does something that's kind of out there and you enjoy that game really let it be known that you enjoy that game and especially over the next few six to 12 months i think you're going to see a lot of developers unionizing and it might feel like a confusing really? thing. It might seem, yeah, I, there, this is not this is not sustainable as careers. How but. how would that work with all the different positions and types of jobs and like who would they be unionizing so, against as startups? So usually, no, not indies, just developers in general. So I mean, even that, also like on artists, on, even owners. on the trip point. Yeah, usually what ends up happening is you do a company union. So it's not a union uh, for a specific type, like but the ABK it is a union, union within, like the ABK union. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So it will be a, a company union. Um, if there is unionization efforts, a lot of people get a little confused over what that means, and it might seem like development gets impacted, your games get delayed, uh, developers stop working, community manage, community relations might stop, you know, updates might fuck. If it happens. Please just fucking support us. Like, if it's this hard happens, to get it so I, hard, man. I run a game studio, right? I am the person that people would unionize against, and I want this to happen. That's how messed up the industry is at this point. Like, this is not a thing that 
we can't wait with anymore. Like, and through every method of communication, the corporations, the companies will make it seem like the developers are being lazy, are trying to cheat you out of your game. We're going to need your support. When that happens, we're going to need support. So you want to know how you can help? Reward original good games, the Baldur's Gate 3 stuff, the people reacting to that. That's amazing. Everybody wants to make a Baldur's Gate, only the downside is that most corporations are going to look at it and be like, how can we copy paste that, but in two years with limited teams, right? Um, they're not going to learn longevity, get, keep people in the studio. So one reward, amazing games. You always do that automatically. I don't have to remind you, don't necessarily shit on games that aren't. That doesn't help anybody. Um, and then when unions happen, if that happens, please just support us. Like if you if you want a better games industry for the creators and thus better games in the long terms, that's how you do it. Oh, I'll add something here. A lot of people don't realize this. They've heard me talk about this a lot. You want a direct way to support game devs that won't cost you a penny? Wish list their games. Wish list their games because that has a potential, a if enough people do it, of putting them in the front page of Steam. People that may have never heard of it will see a game that could be their favorite game. So, like a really easy way to directly support devs that you like, even if you don't have the money to buy the game or not planning to until 1.0 comes out in a year or whatever, wish list that game. Yeah. And, uh, and it is a tangible, <clears throat> tangible way to support them directly. Yeah. And if you feel like supporting streamers doing sponsored streams, wish list the game they're being sponsored to play. <laughs> that's true. I know that's a selfish thing to say, but like, selfish, yeah. for real, if you, if you want to do something it's, for the streamer that's, you know, getting paid to play this game, um, so they get more gigs, if you, if you care to see them get more sponsored gigs, then yeah. support your local streamer. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's, too. <laughs> it's, it's, that's a win win. I like that. I, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, win win. Uh, I, Rami, I'm curious from your point of view, given like how prepared the, the corpo, uh, side of the game industry is for unionization. Do you actually think it will happen on like a grand scale? Well, you know, in Europe, it's already kind of there. Like yeah. European games industry is relatively well organized. Like we have collective bargaining in, in a lot of places. I mean, the French are master strikers. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they, they know how to deal with that. True. Um, you know, I, I think it will happen. But, it, 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 you know, it's the kind of thing where things need to get bad enough for it to happen. Like yeah. it's, it's a thing that the push has slowly been, um, been getting louder. Like the the bell the bells are are you know ringing louder and louder, and I think more and more people are going through their next layoff. And some of these people at Epic have been there for six months, for a year. Like you know, like it, the world is getting to a point where things are bad enough that this is going to happen. I think I think it is going to happen, and you're seeing it in the U.S. specifically, where a large part of the games industry is. You're seeing it across a lot of industries, where it's just like, I never thought anything Amazon could unionize. Sure. Yeah, but there they are, and they're doing it. Um, so I think it's going to happen, but it's going to be a fight, and that's why we're going to need support of, of people on the internet. Like it, it's, it sounds weird, but like making it really hard for corporations to move their responsibility to us as individuals is how we can hold that line when it happens. And you know, if you're thinking of going into the games industry, same thing applies as with the SAG after thing before. One of the reasons the corporations can keep being shit to developers is because there will always be a kid coming out of school that wants that job. Yeah, you know, so we can we can strike on the on the um, uh, senior level. We can create unions on the senior level. It's really hard to do it on the junior level. So even there, if you see a strike, reach out to developers that are in it, talk to them, and like that'll be a better in into the industry than scabbing that job. Because you'll just end up in a you end up in a bad industry. Yeah. Um, but talking to developers, knowing that you support them, lets people know that you're on the side of developers and that you're there for a better future. Which, you know, it's a tough one. This is not going to be an easy fight, but it really needs to happen because Bobby Kodak has too many boats, man. It's too many boats. Yeah. 
Can you though? Both- Can you have too many votes? <laughs> no, he's trying. He's he's really. I mean, Tim Sweeney just sank one. I didn't know what, what happened there. <laughs> yeah, it's called Unreal. Oh, ah, okay. I, yeah. this is all it, was, it was a I was joke. Saying, nah. it was a, it was a, it I was, was like, wait, Twim, Tim Sweeney lost a boat? We have to talk about this poor boat. <laughs> so worried so, about it. Let me ask you a question about this. Like, People are like, fucking Unity. All right, I'll learn Unreal. Fucking Unreal? Go to Godot. <laughs> God damn it. And then Godot's just going to go. <laughs> so, Microsoft's going to be like, so we, so we bought Godot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Those, those emails will leak in three years, Co. We won't. Know I know, it, right? Yeah. Oh Lord. Honestly, would Phil, not Phil's be like, when are they going to find out that we bankrolled Godot? Oh, God. <laughs> I would genuinely not be surprised if Unity or Unreal or Microsoft or Sony has made offers on Godot. I would oh, not be surprised. Sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Just. But that's why I like Godot. Like the the open sourceness of it is what's gonna hold. Like that's what's gonna hold Godot for us. Is somebody buys it, we'll just branch off the latest version of it and just build it again. Yeah. But right, well, like uh, OB, let me ask you this: uh, kind of with what OBS is dealing with, where people keep trying to like take it and monetize it, and OBS is just like, nope, we're just gonna keep going and make better versions and everything, and screw your slobs and all that stuff like yeah come to the yeah. original and for the record always use the original obs is amazing just on yep. its own so. yep <clears throat> that's it um do you like do you think godot <laughs> godot strikes me as like the um um uh you know t- it could be technically superior it could be you know it could work better and stuff like that but like we see like ubuntu and stuff like that like it's better in a lot of ways mm-hmm. than the other the alternatives but the the gate of entry of like how much you need to know like to do it is right pretty right. high do you think the godot has that or no i think godot is like has one really big advantage which is everybody who's going to use it is already a nerd like or, I mean, just linux. per definition right but that linux does like linux doesn't have that right linux is a product that is meant to well Linux as a mainstream OS has the downside of it having to be used by everybody and not everybody wants to deal with Linux, right? Just because everything yeah. already works on Microsoft Windows, everything already works on OS X. Yeah. So for a lot of people, that hop is really large. But game developers, we're programmers, mate. Like, we, 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 will, we will hack whatever together. if we, yeah. like, It's all duct tape anyway. Yeah. So Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Like, like you're, you're, I'm sure you view it as like, Oh, Godot's hard to learn. Fuck you. <laughs> real, real talk, though. Real you talk know how though. hard it is to render shit in one sixtieth of a second? That's hard. Is is yeah. Godot viable for like double and triple A release and console streamline and all that kind of stuff? Not at the moment, and that's actually a really interesting. There's actually a really interesting reason for that, which is it's open source. Hmm. So the, the problem with Godot right now for uh, commercial use um, is that the SDKs that you use for console development are closed source. They're not open source. So because those SDKs you need to integrate are closed source, Godot has no way to integrate them under an open source license because they would have to integrate that code in some way, shape or form. So Godot is now in a weird spot where we're gonna have Godot and then we're gonna have a number of companies that are either related to Godot or part of that foundation that are not open source. So we're almost kind of like going back to Linux kernels. A little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit like I think that's what's going to happen. I don't think necessarily that means that Godot is going to split the same way Linux did. But Mm. I do think um, what is really important for uh, for Godot is that that ecosystem um, becomes becomes more viable um for console development particularly so there's now one company that will help you port godot games to console because they can do that that's going to grow like rapidly obviously and they're just going to be companies that maintain that sort of uh transition so godot is really its biggest challenge right now is just you know being open source um but beyond that it's super viable there's already great games coming out people are porting games over like you know small games are getting ported over really rapidly i've seen some really big developers 
announcing that they're just like, screw it, we're done. Um, and the nice thing about it being open source is if those developers create something that they used in Unity, but don't have in Godot, if a developer creates a version of that, they can literally just submit that. They can submit that into the engine and then the engine maintainers can decide to pull in that code and now it's there. Wait, chat said, are we officially waiting for Godot? Out, Steve. Get out. Yeah, I had a couple of that too. That's going to be 2025, 2024. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize yeah. uh, Halls of Torment is on uh, Godot. Like, oh, that's that good. Game, that game's Keeper. awesome. That game's fucking sick. Yeah. Do oh, yeah. Dome Keeper is as well? Dome Keeper is Godot. Oh. That's a, that's a nice thing. People don't really realize what engine things are in, in yeah, general. Yeah, unless like, there's a splash screen. <laughs> Did you see Unity roll that one back? Yeah, that made me that made me laugh so hard. Yeah, that's one like the, the that's like the, the, the Twitter blue check mark. It's like don't don't worry, you can hide it if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no one needs to know you're dubbing in Unity. It's fine. Yeah, we went through the, <laughs> the full thing on that. Yeah. Oh, um, Brotato is yeah. also good though. That's cool. Really yeah. nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, a lot of good old development, and the, the beauty of it being open source is. As development accelerates, its capability will accelerate like relatively rapidly as well. And with all the funding it's been getting, long live the Terraria dev mate. Like, God, that was a fun one. Yeah. Um, that's the first time he talked to me. You know that? Uh, uh -uh. It's a little starstruck. A little starstruck. <laughs> I never met him. Uh, you know, people that you, you hear about but don't really talk to because they kind of like do their own thing and they're not really part in the of the games industry but i've always thought like this is a generally a cool person you know like it seems like it yeah it's shoot devs like that that just don't really talk they just kind of make their game and yeah they kind of make their game is the um, uh is the stardew valley uh guy kind of similar yes yeah. haunted chocolatier yeah, he, yeah. Well, they just, it, um, he, he made that big thing where it's like, yeah, guys, we're going to put out 1.6. It's not going to be that big of a release. And then they announced like the 1.6 bullet points this other day. And it's another massive fucking patch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to have like eight person co-op in it as well for the first time. Um, uh, wow. So it's, yeah, I, I feel like yeah, those, good. both, both Terraria and uh, um, Stardew. Stardew are the, the type of games where it's like, well, they just keep buying it. I mean, it's just, it's so successful. So I guess we're going to have to push out some more updates. We'll just keep doing it yep. until people stop buying it. Yeah. No, the, the, um, it was really funny that I, that was the first time we talked. It's like really remarkable how much of the games industry came together fighting the Unity thing. Oh, it was a big rally for sure. Uh, you don't, you yeah. don't see that too often. And Godot is huge at the moment. Like the the uh, conversion of like people downloading Godot for the first time is is massive. Like I've been talking to some of the the people that do documentation for them, and it's just like more more people than they could have possibly imagined are coming over. So that's great. Good news. Love it. Once. Yeah, uh, we've had you on now almost five hours of this show, Robbie. And we have no idea what you've been playing. Obviously, you've been moving, but let's, like, what? Can we interject something uh, real quick also that I heard earlier, just real fast? Okay. You a minute ago, I know I know about Vlambeer and everything, but I, I, apologies for this. I missed the memo where you have now started a new game dev company? I've started working on a new game, uh, but it's not... I don't have any news about it. I don't have anything to say because we're really in the prototyping like area. I'm really happy to be back at prototyping and making making stuff and like just you know trying how things feel on the controller and how things feel on the keyboard. So um, I'm I'm very excited to be back at like game development. It's not um, I've really enjoyed consultancy. Like I've really enjoyed helping people out and like building things, but like. Over the next like six months to a year, I want to sort of like transition back into game development. I picked a terrible year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, terrible what year. I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, we're counting on you, Rami. To we'll save see you in industry. 2024. No pressure. In 2025, no pressure. Rami. But, yeah. You know, I got to admit, yeah. I, a part of me thought when I asked you, "Are you starting a game company?" I thought that binder of NDAs was going to come back out. Like, yeah. Can we talk about yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> this is honestly one of my favorite things of running my own studio. You can as just always, say been. whatever you want. I can just say whatever the fuck I want. And I think that's my favorite thing about my role in the games industry. It's just like, I'm the, I'm just neutral as shit. 
Like, I don't, if somebody does something stupid, I'll say it. You're the Swiss. Don't care, I, but, I have a I mean, question for you, Rami. Like, in your estimation, if you could Nicholas, look right, at yeah. yourself, <laughs> like, uh, like, look at you from outside, what opinion of yourself would you have as a game dev? Are you easy to work with, hard to work with? I'm, so it depends on what role I'm in, uh, obviously. Okay. Um, like, as a producer, I try to be as easy to work with as possible, but I also kind of have to be the bad guy. Like, you know, the, your job as a producer is to keep the team going. It's also to tell people no, right? Not everybody likes being told no. Um, as a creative director, I think I'm, you know, I have a fairly strong vision of what I'm trying to make. Um, but I leave my team a lot of freedom to figure out how they fill that in. So I think people who've worked with me on the creative director side, they're more like, you know what? Very easy going to work with people who work with me on the production side. They're like, I hope that what they think is, well, at least he's fair. You know, I try to be transparent about what's happening, um, even when that's not good news. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I, I think was if just I was curious, watching, like, like, if you look at yourself like a like a whip cracking like taskmaster, huh. or you would be like, you know, the laid back boss who's like wearing sweats in his in his office, like, hey, come on in, we're having a drum circle. Uh, it's sort of in the middle between the two. Just think of me as very Dutch. Like, I'll, I'll say what's happening, uh, and I okay. don't like keeping that from people. I don't like being like, oh, you know. I don't, I don't like pulling a Team Sweeney where everything is fine and we're putting like shields up and then six months later, 900 people are gone like that. Fuck that. Right. Like if things are so not you're looking saying good, I... Being a hypocrite is like a negative thing. Yeah, I don't, I do personally. Okay, it, okay. It, And it's opinion, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't really want to pre pretend that I have all the answers, but fuck that. Okay. Okay. I think that's fair right. enough. Yeah, I think that's a... <laughs> It's one way to do it, I suppose, Rami. Yeah. All right, you've passed the test. Uh, if you need right. any voice actors, I, I could be bothered. <laughs> are, you, are, 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 are you union? <clears throat> Shit. No. <laughs> but I could be hired on as a consultant. <laughs> Good Lord. Good Lord. Uh, Rami, I'm, what have you been playing? What's, what's been uh, passing through the hands? that you could talk about, I guess. I mean, the, the, the most obvious one is, is Destiny. Like, I finally had some time to catch up on Destiny. Yeah. Um, it's really good right now. They, they added, like, weird, a, a weird kind of, like, roguelike-y thing where there's, like, cards that have, like, builds. And... Yeah, with the season. Yeah. Yeah, the season is really good. I we kind of came on the sure. end of a big uh, kerfluffle with uh, them being DDoSed and whatnot. But, yeah, I'm yeah. glad you were able yeah, to get in and play. Right. It was rough. Dude, my lady uh, was she came into the bedroom she's like i don't know what to do i have tried restarting the game i've tried everything and she's like losing her mind because she thinks it's on her and then oh, she comes uh, back and she goes it was a ddos and i was like oh good are you calm now she's like i feel better yeah <laughs> will be so funny from the other side of the planet somebody was just saying to me like oh let's let's mess up mess up zeke's day let's ddos destiny <laughs> That's particularly what's happening. I um, I would be honored to be that big that someone would take their time out of their day to fuck with me because I don't think I'm that big. <laughs> I think you're that big. Oh, um, thank you, mommy. You're welcome. Um, the um, uh, armored core I went through a few times. Like really, really enjoyed that. Um, honestly, like just that's a good fucking video game. Yeah. um really bad when you say really went through like fight. you beat the game like three or four times, times. yeah oh, you gotta wow. get the you gotta get the true ending yeah yeah oh, it's wow. like a near automata thing where every time you beat it you have opportunity to get to another ending it's not as elegant as near automata um but i beat it once properly then the second time i cheesed it there's a specific build that was just ridiculously op oh yeah I just cheesed the hell out of the game uh you know double double shotguns and uh you know good good time yeah um and then after that i did a i did a run where it was um where i tried to make a proper mech for every um for every uh battle because now i knew what i was going to fight most of the time and i only cheesed a few levels in the <laughs> final run 
Um, and then on the last run, I did it proper. Uh, I didn't go for the platinum. Like S ranking every level is too crazy for me. Like I, I hate, I hate achievements like that. I know why they're there, but like, God, why? Um, I'm like one trophy short of platinuming it. Oh, well, now, now you gotta go back and do it. Now, now you're one. I, I ain't doing. The, I ain't. I ain't doing it. I ain't. Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. Man, I've um, I've started to do that. Uh, my my recent interest in in games, apart from just all the the games that have been great to play, is creating micro goals of just like I'm gonna hit. A lot of them are competitive based, but uh, one of them is like I'm gonna go beat. Uh, is it Fatalis in Monster Hunter World? The like final, 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 final boss from the DLC that's apparently ungodly hard. Uh, but it's like 150 plus hours to grind. I eventually want to do that. Just stuff I always passed yeah. up because it was always like way too difficult or way too time consuming to do it's been fun yep yeah no i mean you know the, the, there is something to be said about like games having really rough challenges i just think s ranking every level in armored core ain't in my idea of like i will enjoy this sure um the um um beyond that i've not obviously i've not had a lot of time to play let me think did i play anything else that i can talk about uh, I was here two weeks ago, so I talked about Venba. I think last time. I don't. I don't think so. Well, Venba is one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, like easily, it is a um, cooking game. Oh no! Oh yes. Okay, I do remember this. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So Fenba is one of my favorite games of the year. I replayed it the other day just to make sure that I'm not losing my mind that it is actually one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> but it is it is actually one of the best games I've ever played. Nice. Um, I have a lot of games on my to-do list. I've only gone through like the first act of Baldur's Gate. I was going to um, ask like, if you've played BG3 at all, if that's something that you're interested for, in. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, like, I love it, but... Um, yeah, I just don't have don't have the time to like properly play Baldur's Gate three. Yeah. Um. So that's a bit of a rough one. And then there was what was the other game? Let me see if I can just open up my Steam. Just to rattle there off another... uh, games that I just want. I just want to quickly look what's in there because I feel there was another game that I played the other day that I really enjoyed, and like my brain is just fried. It happens when buying uh, a house. It's it... one of the side effects. My yeah. God, that's so much work. <laughs> oh, actually, I replayed. I replayed. Did you ever play Defcon? Like the like the like I've the been playing a bunch game? of old games. That's what's been happening. Yeah, I started. To yeah, say the, the old very old, old, the old old game. I want to remember that one with the map and everything. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, I've played it when I was oh, wow. young. <laughs> Not any time recently. Yeah. Nope. So I recently installed it, and it is still very fun if you have a bunch of friends to play a game of DEF CON, especially in office mode. Uh, just really, really good. Um, really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, so I've been playing a bunch of older games because, I, you know, I, I needed something to distract myself that <clears throat> wouldn't be complicated. So yeah, uh, Hell is Other Demons. I replayed Hell is Other Demons. If you really like uh, indie action games, a health of his other demons is like really simple roguelike action platformer thing. Um, cool style, really fun. Uh, I can recommend. Uh, Storyteller, that's a bit more recent, but I played Storyteller. Yeah, Zeke's played, we played that. Stacklands. I think Storyteller is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think that launched on mobile or something recently. I remember seeing a video for that or something. Uh, let me see. The post void. Post void. That was another one of those games that just goes really fast, and I just needed something fast to distract me. I'm really holding my breath for Alan Wake too, though. I God, those my, previews! Oh, holy shit! Oh those God, previews dude. were phenomenal. Uh, that's that's the one. I watched. Uh, that game has been so good. I think Skill Up had a video uh, this past week when they were the preview embargo uh, was lifted. Holy shit, Alan Wake 2 looks really good. <laughs> Everything about that game looks phenomenal. Uh, they're all speaking super highly I, um, of it. Uh, Alan Wake, the first Alan Wake was one... I think it was the first time I ever bought a limited edition of any video game. 
yeah. for Salem Wake. And since so this has turned into a thing where if JP says on stream, get the Final Fantasy VII one with the big motorbike, I apparently drop a few hundred dollars on that. But yeah, Alan Wake was the first was the first time I ever did that. Um, so I still have the book that came with it. Uh, that nice. came with it, and I I really really I still play the music every now and then. Uh, I think that the music did an incredible job with that. Um, played the remake when it came out, and when you know two started coming out, at first was a little worried that they're going a little more horror-y. Yeah. No, nah, nah, not worried anymore. It it's looking really good. If if you're not already in, go watch some of the previews. There's a ton of different uh, creators that put out and and um, journals that put out a bunch of. different I've had to on work one. not to watch them. I've just been like reading oh, God, people's reactions phenomenal. to them, and oh man, everyone everyone is saying that it's just it's looking great. Absolutely, it looks looks ten out of ten. I Can't I'm wait to play it. I'm scared to play them because they are scary. Like the footage is pretty spooky frightening type deal that you would expect from that world uh awesome but i'm i'm definitely gonna dive into that it looks really good uh coming out at the right time too um at the uh at the end of the year so that will be cool robbie did you play any uh, I, I know the connection's a little bit hazy uh but your audio for the most part is still pretty good um but did you check out the starfield did you did you have any starfield thoughts at all have you have you played it <laughs> yeah mm. Oh. I would hook up some. I would have to hook up a thing, and I haven't. I haven't hooked it up. Okay. What is happening to my internet? I don't know. It's kind of all over the place. You gotta stop loading all those web pages. Welcome is to homeownership, Tim. Tim, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tim, I'm sorry, Tim. Tim called his guy Tim, around so the sorry. world, and I didn't mean... you are now being DDoSed. Actually, yeah. Yep. This is, this is uh, it. This is yeah. what, this he is he moved did. his team off Destiny, and yep. is now. Yep. He's <laughs> got to take him out. He's got to take him out. Uh, um. Well, while while we wait for your your internet to uh, to settle, uh, we've been playing some stuff. Uh, Co, are you? I was surprised. Are you done with Cyberpunk now? Uh, pretty much. Yep. Well, at, was that just because like the content ran it? Like you did everything you wanted to do, or what? What is? I the... I did every single thing I could do in the expansion except one branch of like the last third, which I kind of want to save for my next run oh because. My God. Okay. I know whenever Project Orion comes out, I think Rami just found out something was downloading. My bad. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I opened when, when, I uh, opened Steam, remember? There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So uh right now we know that CDPR is working on a variety of projects, and one of them is called Project Orion, mm -hmm. which the which is a cyberpunk related project, which everyone is musing is probably Cyberpunk 2 or something similar to that. Um so with with Phantom Liberty, I knew that I wanted to do like a hundred percent of it, but I also found out that like this last branching part has some really incredible stuff in it. So I want to save like a little morsel for when I know I'll inevitably inevitably play it. Cyberpunk Punk again. Yeah, I also save the rest of my hundred percent of the base game for it. Uh, but no, Phantom Liberty and two point oh, man, like in a lot of in a lot of ways, they did it. I yeah, I agree. In a lot of ways, they did it. I mean, it took them the extra two and a half to three dev years that we all kind of thought that they needed. Um, but Cyberpunk 2.0 and Cyberpunk 1.0 are basically the equivalent in a parallel universe of an EA in full release. Um, Cyberpunk 1.0 is a collection of RPG mechanics that they kind of put in Cyberpunk. It didn't necessarily work in Cyberpunk. They were relatively flavorless. They weren't really tailored to the world. Um, they were kind of genericized in a lot of ways. The story and the backbone of the characters, which were arguably the best part, were there and, and worked great. But a lot of the stuff they promised wasn't in. It just it didn't really have a voice in a lot of ways when it came to gameplay and mechanics. And over the last two years, that's what they've been working on. Um, the new perk system is fantastic and fits it so much better. It lets you really specialize a character. The way that they do item, uh, the way that they do stats with the cyberware system is great. Um, the skill system actually gives like meaningful upgrades and encourages you to do all sorts of different things to to get, you know, real tangible power upgrades for your character by doing things in a variety of different ways. Uh, the new area of Phantom Liberty is fantastic. The characters are awesome and well voiced. The story is fun and interesting. The location is is cool and just fun to explore around and seeing like little Easter eggs and stuff everywhere. 
The new cop system works pretty well. Um, still, still some jankiness. There are still bugs, but compared to my first yeah. playthrough, it is literally like playing a beta as opposed to a finished product. I mean, absolutely. When I first play, played Cyberpunk 1.0. You could not basically do anything without running to some kind of bug, be it audio, visual, um, a character pathing through something, something not, a physics not working, a physics environment not working properly, everywhere. Like for me personally, one of my, my biggest bugs in 1.0 is anytime Johnny Silverhand would appear, he has this like, this pixely matrixy graphic that goes around his body that would only show in half his body. Every time I saw him, it would just like threw in your face, like this is an unfinished product. Um, most of those little things have been fixed up. And and uh, like I said, there are still bugs, but man, it is so much better. The game is still missing some, some and, and rightfully so, is getting some meaningful critiquing on some of the stuff that it's missing in terms of like stuff that they told us it would have that it just never did, like the kind of interactive environments, the the real immersive NPCs, you know, and, and how they interact with the world and stuff. Some of that stuff's still missing. It's been improved, but it's still missing and, yeah. and it's there. But in terms of the stuff that they did focus on, it it really does feel like 2.0 is kind of the 1.0 that was like literally 85 to 90 percent of what we wanted from the game i agree yeah i <laughs> i uh, the entire time i was playing the game the thought just constantly came back into my head and i'm still i i just got to phantom liberty and because i started i ended up starting a new playthrough chat convinced me and then i was like wait this game's actually good and like 20 hours in i'm still playing haven't even touched phantom liberty yet but i've interacted with 2.0 the entire oh, time I'm watch. thinking, yeah, this was a bug. Uh, I just happened. Okay. This. Uh, the entire <laughs> time I'm thinking is like, if this game released as this instead of what it was two years ago, the conversation around this game would be so wildly different. Uh, it, and it, I don't. I wish I lived in that universe. <laughs> hey, can we? Can we switch from the flashes? People in chat are asking. Oh, is it, yeah, is it yeah, that's, that's what I was saying, dude. It's I don't know what I've never seen that bug. That's yeah, the bug is uh, you encounter uh, you encounter a boss there, and she messes with your cyberware, and then because ah, I left oh, the area, uh, it keeps flashing. Oh yeah. my god! And then I died, and it fixed itself. Yeah, is ultimately what happened. But um that was like one of two bugs i think i've encountered uh, in the like 30 or 40 hours that i've been playing it um but Pretty bad bug yeah i mean it, it's because i didn't fight the boss so kind of self-inflicted i could have just killed myself and, <laughs> i guess i don't know i'm making excuses for them but uh through and through <laughs> the game is great the, the other thing too that i thought of while playing this uh and it, this feeling popped up while playing Baldur's gate and it was the complete opposite while playing starfield and i only compare those even though they're kind of wildly different games uh but it's just what i've played recently uh the like immersion factor of this game compared to something like starfield is very invocative like the immersion factor that bg3 gives me where like i felt when i'm playing this game i feel like i'm a badass person walking around with knives that at any moment can just go stealth and just throw like a billion throwing knives at people kill them immediately and then continue walking down feeling like a badass oh. in this world it's so Dude, fun by the, to just by do the that. end by the end of my playthrough and i didn't even like i have like probably half plus of the the main story related i seriously am basically the character from edge runners with blades in his hand oh I, yeah you I'm, went using, full melee. I'm using a i'm using a sandy i i've got like these giant blades i'm fully specced into them i mean i can slow down time and kill eight people and they're all dead before the sandy goes up so their their corpses are dead but still standing, still standing. Yeah. and then the sandy turns off and all of their bodies just go <laughs> so my and you you just stand in the middle of that and you're like this is fucking bad mine's the opposite like this is same. so good because i hit sandy throw yeah. a shit ton of knives yeah and then the, and they all just kind of fall yeah uh, and it feels yeah. great you're right it feels it's it's in it's, it's really cool it's so it's fun to play enough, that way I had a major, major, major bug with Ray Reconstitution, Ray Reconstruction, I think, which is a, a tech demo -y oh, feature. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Anytime I'd charge up my blades, which is every single combat multiple times, it would render the effect of the blade in a small resolution in the top left of my screen instead hell? of on the thing. So I would like, I would charge them up and then like the entire top two thirds of my screen would then have this like blue effect all over it, like completely off center. All I had to do was flick that off and it worked fine. Huh. Um, apparently it was a known issue, but 
uh, yeah, there are to to accentuate. There are still a little, you know, some some rough edges. There they're, are. They're figuring them out, but you know, it's it's a night and day difference from original. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm having a blast with it though. It's it's uh, it's one of those things where I I wish the game released. I, I saw footage uh, on the uh, the cyber uh, cyberpunk game subreddit. I think is the name of it. Um, and it was uh, 1.0 launch footage from the PS4, uh, from whenever that was three years mm-hmm. ago. Man, I had forgotten how that game released. It like loads in and you see like V's eyes and then her torso and then the pants load on top of that. And then the skeletal system is like peeking out of her arm. It's just, I don't understand how the fuck that was like released at that state. It's terrible. It's really, really something to see. Um, Definitely go check that out if you if you have only played 2.0 uh, in your experience with Cyberpunk is only uh, 2.0. It's worth seeing how far that game has uh, has come. So I would say, Co, it's if people are are the idea of worth, it's worth it now for people to dive in if they've staved off the the want thus far. This this game is in the best state it's been, and arguably a better state than I think. That I would argue the majority of players ever thought it would be. So if you have ever considered playing Cyberpunk, the 2.0 patch in Phantom Liberty is is like I I have no qualms, like two thumbs up recommending this game now. Yeah. Where before it would be heavily caveated. <laughs> like, yeah, you'll probably like this game if, and then you know, a list of like things you'd have to deal with or be willing not to focus on. But at this point, it's just like, oh yeah, dude. You, you want a cyberpunk power fantasy game? There's there's no other game. It's 2077. I think this is this is the only experience like that that you're going to get. Sure. Yeah. I would echo that as well. Um, it's been kind of hard going back to Starfield in some ways. God, yeah. And, I, and I'm a Starfield fan. I'm actually arguably doing like the coolest quest line, but like it's it's dude, especially it's... especially Phantom Liberty. Like just all of the organic conversation and like the level design, like the first time you walk through the the main i've heard that's really cool town I done area. yeah oh man dude i mean it's like you're walking through like uh, uh some kind of good movie uh where it's like they spent like millions on the <laughs> set and i mean you're just like walking through it looking around there's stuff going on everywhere tons of ambient conversation people randomly arguing like it's it's uh it's something dude it's, it's crazy. uh it's crazy i thought about that a lot when just watching uh not even the anything new it's just the dialogue from the game released and the way that those uh interactions play out in cyberpunk the entire time i was doing it i was just like god starfield just fucking sucks in this regard like this just (laughs) absolutely (laughs) shits all over what starfield does it's kind of it's it's a different it's a different league yeah somebody somebody like tried somebody asked me to kind of compare the two and i was kind of like it's kind of hard like they're not they're not i said it when i was comparing neon to to night city like yeah kind of they're they're not really playing the same game like starfield is not really trying to be cyberpunk it's trying to do something different and cyberpunk is on such a different level that it's like it, it's not really the it's just, it's just a totally different flavor yeah like it, it's yeah. even the dialogue though just the writing like listening to the characters in cyberpunk is so much more honestly interesting like it's a it's more it's more immersive <laughs> yeah it's more immersive 100%. yeah it, it feels real where all the npcs in starfield feel like they're there to tell you something or to make you feel like the character you walk up to a random person like hey did you hear that the governor put on a show yesterday did it and you're just like i'm sorry do i know you yeah. you're like it's so weird and fabricated and it's just like such an overt facade yeah um where in cyberpunk you know you walk up to a vendor and it's two people arguing over the price of a bd because it's a bootleg and you know, one of them's pissed they paid too much, and you're just sitting there like, "What is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, it, it just feels real. The the other thing, and then we'll get off of Cyberpunk. I had forgotten. I think I said this exact same thing when we talked about the game three years ago, two years ago, whenever it was. I forgot how fucking depressing Cyberpunk is from like a narrative point of view. Nothing in that game is happy. Everything in that game is just sad. It is just. I mean, it's just game developers <laughs> making their reality into a video game. Yeah. Like, we're just, it's we're just so, making what we know. It's just so <laughs> sad. Like I had forgotten how sad it is, and then I hit like the Judy quest line, and I'm just like, 
Oh, fucking the, Christ. The tagline, I gotta fucking the tagline, go deal with <laughs> There are no winners in Night City. Yeah. There are no winners. Even even the winners are losers. God. Like, it's... it's Mm. It's just so yeah. sad. Every there's, and I've heard I the am, DLC is the same thing. It's just sad. It's just <laughs> depression. Oh, it's you just are in for a ride. Happy. You think the next few years of game dev are <laughs> Um, like, oh man, oh it's my like, god. I, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing what you think of the new ending. Um, I've heard it. I heard. Uh, Woo! Gassy, Gassy was talking about it. He's like, yeah, I beat Phantom Liberty. Love that game. Holy shit! I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Go, I'm not. I'm not going to spoil. Go it. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say this: I watched Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Yeah. And the second the credits rolled on the end of that, I went into this like multi-day, like I'm just going to stare at a wall kind of you know feeling. <laughs> yeah. And same. let's just say that they nailed that. Oh God damn it. <laughs> Dude, that's when that like, song. Popped, oh man, when that song Whew. just starts playing in uh, in the world. Every time it does, yeah. I just oh, lose yeah. interest in whatever conversation, and I'm like, "Where's that song?" And then I shoot the radio, <laughs> <laughs> or I just go I, turn it off silently. I, I anytime that song comes on, I let it run because I love seeing chat just combination sad. of cry and scream and turn it off and no i can't handle this yeah and... <laughs> i just I, I shoot the depression away you know it's the american way it, it's how oh uh, it yeah i'm the same way though I'm yeah the same way I, I haven't had a song be able to do that to me in in actual decades like yeah it's wild it's wild. yeah all uh all, all i'm thinking of the song right now and it's making me sad let me just put it that Dude. way <laughs> i yeah I, I did like, I mean, you were doing like 10 hour streams. So I did like an eight hour stream of only cyberpunk. And after the end was like, I got to go watch something happy. Like I need to go watch some TikToks of puppies or, yep. or happiness. Oh. <laughs> Last thing I, I, I want to add about the expansion, which is great. I absolutely love how every single, what they call them gigs, which are essentially side quests. There's like 10 to 15 of them. Yeah. Every one of them has like a unique little story or a unique interaction or a unique mechanic like there there's nothing is phoned in which i love yeah. i did every single side thing in there and at no point at any point that i did i get that feeling of just like oh well i said i do 100 percent, so i need to do everything like every one of them had like something interesting and worthwhile to make it super enjoyable exciting which i gotta say like these days that's that's just that's just great. <laughs> it's just great yeah i'm excited oh, for yeah. that I will definitely be jumping into all that, uh, whether it's on stream or, or off stream. I'm I'm excited to jump into it. I, oh. I've been playing a lot off stream, just walking around, killing things. Last last thing I want to say for any new Cyberpunk players, by the way, wait until the end of the game before you do the DLC. Really? Do do the base game first, and then do the DLC. Like because full base you, game story. If if you're a first time Cyberpunk player, oh, I would rec I would recommend doing all the side content and base game first. Maybe even to the point of, of, you know, hard save before the point of no return, explore the endings, that kind of thing, and then go do the DLC. Okay. And the reason I say that is because not only do the new skills and stuff in the DLC make you obscenely powerful, but I only got like halfway through the base game and, and then I did all there is to do in the DLC and I'm literally three levels from max level. And if I were to go back and do the other half of the game in base game, not only would it be a complete cakewalk, but it's like, it, it, it takes, like, you can tell it's not balanced for that. Mm. So if you want the best experience, like the best linear experience, also on top of that, there's a lot of stuff in the expansion that is changed and altered due to base game stuff. So the more you do in the base game, the more like little nuances. And like, if you meet someone in the expansion, like I didn't do a certain side quest in the base game. I met that character in the expansion. And they were just like, who are you? I don't know you. But I know for a fact that if you had done that quest, you get to be buddies with them. So that would have been a completely different thing, meeting them ah, in the expansion. Okay. Um, love interests play a role in the expansion. So really? doing a, yeah, absolutely. So getting a love interest could be a thing. So I, I probably would recommend saving the DLC for the end. For sure. Okay. That, that might change how I uh, approach that then. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I, I finished the game the first time, but if if quest and stuff are impacted by that, I might just do... I just live in that world off stream for the next couple of months uh, and play also, the, the DLC. Idris Elba. Oh. 
What yeah, a, I, a, I heard mixed reviews of him uh, from I a couple like people. It. You liked it? Okay. I like it. I thought he did great. Okay. I do. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I uh, thought he fit the role perfectly. I want to hear about Cocoon before we jump to that real quick. Liza P. Co. Did you finish it? Are you going yes. back to it? Oh, you did finish it. Did you I finish? Did. So finish base game. Did you finish it before the patch? No, but I did get by the bosses. The bosses that changed. Patched, what I okay. Yeah. Yeah. They they patched that game and made it easier. I, I'm very curious. Yeah. I, I knew feedback was like, God, this game's fucking difficult. Um, but they patched Liza Apparently P. there was a, a very vocal part of the community that was like, I'm not playing this game anymore due to the difficulty. Yeah, people just tuned out. The, they decreased HP on a lot of things and increased and they, a couple yep. stats. Uh, increased the damage. Carry it also happened. Their HP. Yeah. Also happened on Armored Core. That's two games, two games in a row. They made that one like... boss easier, right? One of the opening yeah. bosses? Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. really like it seems to be a thing. We're over we're overbalancing at the moment. Yeah. Um, probably Elden Rings inspired or something. Maybe. I mean some of the they didn't funny enough, they didn't actually change what I would consider to be the hardest boss in Lies of P. Uh they only changed the like not not what they changed bosses that weren't what I consider to be the hardest bosses. And so I was right. really surprised. Uh, but I guess every boss is different for every single player type deal. Um, but yeah, I finished that game as well. Uh, what a fucking game. Just from start to finish. Absolutely loved uh, everything around Lies of P. Uh, and uh, can't recommend it enough. I think we said the same thing last week. But hell of a game. I, I, do, I do have to say, anytime they make changes like that, I kind of wish the devs would, would put in systems where it's like you can try it on its intended on the original difficulty like five times and then it like gives you an option or story mechanic to then bring it down to a lower level you know i it's kind of sad to think that like that original challenge is gone yeah you know that, can, that it can never be revisited kind of thing yeah we generally don't do that because people feel bad lower that's the thing yeah but that's the, but the like, thing is is that it's a totally different thing though if you've come up to a wall that you can't right. progress past but you right. have the option to then continue if you like the game, but you just can't beat a boss. At least they give you an option to then lower it and beat. Yeah, I think I think the opposite would actually be more interesting. To just be like, okay, we we nerfed this boss, you wrecked it. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, we, we have a harder version for you. You want to try that? That 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 could be fun. Like I, I kind of feel like that would be a, a cool mechanic that I've not seen enough. It's just like, oh, you did that real easy, huh? Well, want to try again? On a harder there's, there's, a, there's a game on the tip of my tongue that makes it that you so you can get like items to supercharge the bosses. What game am I thinking of? You oh, can have like God. hard versions Met of the bosses. Metroid tends to do that. If you hundred uh, percent a Metroid, they tend to make the final boss harder. Um, like the butterflies in Dark Hades Souls or whatever. Was it Hades? I don't remember that. In Hades. There's a handful. Maybe like though. Sekiro had the bell, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But that, that, that's a great idea, Rami. That's that's a much more, I think, approachable way to do it. Where it's yeah. like you, the default is the easier version, and then if you ha you have the option to upgrade it to the harder version, maybe even yeah. give the player like some additional rewards or something for doing it. So it's a cosmetic or something, right? Yeah. But you know, I I, I do like I hate the idea of of that super because those fights were fun. Those fights are hard, but dude, they were they're fun, and you fucking felt great. awesome. You felt great beating the them. So dopamine like hits, that... dude. That I yeah. got from that game, right. I haven't had those in a while. <laughs> I Listen, don't like the idea. I will tell you. Away. I will tell you. In terms of difficulty, um, the game that I love most when it comes to difficulty is Earth Defense Force. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's ridiculous, but it's it's every every difficulty level is its own unlock like you know, like chain, um, you can go in and do the first level on super hard, right on extreme, and then unlock stuff that will make everything on normal a cakewalk. You can like go to normal until you hit a wall, go back 10 levels, do it on a higher difficulty, get stuff that will help you. Like it is the weirdest difficulty system I've ever seen. It works so well. Just prioritizes fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just like screw it. Oh, you want to do easy now? Okay. Do easy. Sure. Whatever. That's always cool. Don't give a shit. Yeah. Do you like, see the trailer for the new one, by the way, at TGS? Yeah, they put out a new trailer for that if you want to go watch it. Uh, what the fuck? I think that's EDF6, uh, if, if uh, you remember correctly. How did nobody tell me that shit? I don't know. I, so think, much. I me... think they just thought that you're the number one uh, EDF uh, I mean, source. What? 
So, uh, yo, Cole, you watched the post credit scene for Lies P, yeah? I did. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. If man, oh, if, if that's Lord. where we're headed. <laughs> oh man, sign me the fuck I, up, dude. dude. Lies of P was such a freaking pleasure. Like it's when I first great. heard, when I heard, I heard what Lies of P like the theme behind it before I actually played the demo or anything, and I was like, that sounds really dumb. Yeah. Like really dumb. Like nothing about that sounds entertaining. That sounds very like gimmicky. I don't think I'm gonna be interested. By the time I was done with Lies of P, I was like, this was actually incredible. This is one of my favorite Souls-like games. Like in a lot of ways, like it actually has like a total cool narrative. It has unique features. It keeps the Souls-like feel at heart. Um, it, I thought it was difficult, but at the same time, it was approachable. Like it was, anytime I died, I almost never felt like it was because of something dumb or cheap outside yeah. of a few camera weirdnesses. Um, I mean, the levels were interesting and fun to explore and tons of secrets. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It vo fully voice acted? Like yeah, just just the the list you just keep checking boxes off. It's and um it'll yeah, be and great. I, I will be talking about it at the end of the year for sure. It's it's a fucking incredible game. Oh yeah, definitely worth checking people, out. I said this last week, but I'll say it again. There were people, multiple people, uh, throughout the entire stream that were like, oh yeah, the, the, I would say that's something I really like about it, and they would just go, oh yeah, that's why it's my game of the year. Yep, I I can see it a hundred percent. It's it's really really good. Really, really good, and uh, make sure you watch the post credit scene because I think about that Can't a wait. lot. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> That's not where I thought they were gonna take it, and Dude, if, I can't wait. <laughs> if the next, if if the end credit scene thing works, like this company set for the next twenty years in terms of what they could make, <laughs> like just totally. Oh my Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. yeah. <laughs> really, really cool shit out of that. Uh, what about okay. Lords of the Fallen? Well, that comes out this week. Remember or this month. This month, yeah, yeah. Robin, go ahead. Remember the thing I said about 2024 and not going to be a good year for games. I take it back. Yeah. You're yeah, EDF's coming out in 2024. We're good. Okay. We're good. EDF saved. Okay. There you EDF go. saved uh, gaming. We're good. Yeah. Uh, EDF. <laughs> I'm glad you guys liked it. I'm, I'm actually going to to uh, start my Lies of P run on Tuesday. Oh, dude, Hell you'll yeah, have a, a blast. I it. Yep. Yeah. It is a motherfucking hard game, though, Zeke. Like without. <laughs> and that, for the record, even the nerf bosses are still being called difficult. Yeah. So dude, it's like, like <laughs> it. Yeah. They're. It's hard, without question, without question. So I, I do hope you enjoy it, though. It's a fantastic fucking game. Fantastic game. Um, Zeke, should I show footage of Cocoon? Should I just show the trailer? I don't. It's such a puzzle. If you just, if you just start from the from the beginning. It's it's totally fine. Okay, um, I I think I let's see how many. Uh, I think it took me. Um. Oh God, the Xbox! How where the fuck do you see like a time played? <laughs> I don't think you really can, to be honest. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, I've heard nothing. Well, but... I think it took me around around five hours, like four to five hours, somewhere in between there. Um, so you got a lot, you got plenty to, to show at the beginning. Okay. Great. If you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I'll pull it up. Cocoon took over, uh, uh, like there was a lot of people checking it out, playing it. Um, it just recently released on, uh, it, it's on steam, but it's also on game pass, which is where I played it. Um, uh, released on the 29th. So a couple days ago, uh, it is a, an atmospheric delight a uh, puzzle game where you take the role of this little like moth kind of character moth butterfly thing the right off the bat one of the things i ex I, I really enjoy no no splash screen no menu screen no tutorial none of that huh. nothing there was this this is what you see my the entire run of the game is just this there's no button prompts on the screen, no nothing, because it is move and one uh, one button, <laughs> like basically. Hmm. Um, actually, no, two buttons. I'm sorry. There's two buttons. There's a uh, uh, interact, and then there's uh, <laughs> like interact two, I guess. Um, because <laughs> you carry these, you, well, you carry these globes around, and uh, some of the globes have secondary things. So if you press the first interact, you drop it. So while you're carrying it, you press the other interact button to do the thing the globe can do or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
that's the basic gist of the game is uh you uh go go through these these lands and they're all uh contained within a globe so i played a game uh and i talked about it i really enjoyed it It was called patrick's parabox which is a puzzle game that the the cubes the squares go into the squares go into the squares go into the squares yeah this is a Mm. similar kind of idea um where you you uh jump into a globe or a world and the world is completely different so this one's like a desert arid kind of a kind of a thing and then there's a swampy kind of a thing and then there's a you know whatever but um you find the globes within the globes so on and so forth um the story isn't there's no words being said at all there's no dialogue there's no there's no like te- i didn't see one word printed on, uh, through my entire run of this game because i didn't even look at the settings <laughs> i didn't see anything there was no printed like words on this uh there are symbols and stuff that you kind of have to like puzzle out how to how to put like uh interact with them in order stuff like that but they're all symbols there's no like no words no talking no nothing um and it is gorgeous the sound design is fucking amazing um the immersiveness of it i think that's that's kind of the point was that they just you just fire up the game and you play it and that's it that's you just play the game and there's nobody telling you anything you just kind of like figure out what's going on um all taking place in this in this fantasy world named something i'm guessing (laughs) (laughs) um well multiple fantasy worlds called somethings uh but uh every time like the, the the kind of the object of the game is solve one world get a new world to solve and so on and so forth and then you use like the that, that's the first globe one of the first globes you get i think it might be the first globe you get is, is the orange one um the first world you find not only is there a land inside it but the the globe itself has a function like a mechanical function within the game so in order to like get past this this obstacle you have to you have to have the correct globe equipped and then you have to remember where you put it like oh shit is the green globe in the red globe or is the green globe in the purple globe? However, they are kind of nice about it because if, if one globe is inside of the other one, you, you see it. Like the, the red globe that I'm carrying right now, if the green was inside it, you'd see a little green like circle inside of it. Yeah. So you can kind of tell where it is, but there's a lot of that. There's a lot of like jumping into this one, doing this thing, then jumping out, taking the globe with you, doing this, putting it back, so on and so forth and um um they really uh do make a good use of the mechanic of of um having to uh jump from world to world in order to complete your current task so let me let me just make that simple i have something to do in the red world but there's a a barrier or an obstacle that only the green world can solve so I go to get the green thing. I can't, I can't bring it out because uh, there's no path to it. So I have to figure out something in the green world. And then I find like the, I'm just going to make up a color. Then I find like a barrier that only, uh, obstacle that only the teal world. So I have to go find the teal world to solve that one, to solve the green one, to bring the green one out of the red one, to solve the red one. That was my original problem. So it's a lot of that. It's really, really cool. Really well done. Um, yeah anything like if you have any questions about it let me know so you said it it took you five ish hours what is that yeah. a does this game uh adhere to zeke time because i i heard it was a 10 hour game for someone else but then if it's zeke time that would mean that it's a two hour game for everybody else how the fuck long well, is this game <laughs> well here's the thing here's the thing the reason why it took me a like an average video game player's amount of time yeah there's no there's no dialogue or story or words or anything like that and that's where a lot oh. of I, a lot of my like extra time comes in i talk shit i make jokes all this kind of stuff there's no like there's nothing to joke about here because no one's talking and there's no text there's okay. no story a three-hour game ish so like yeah between like on on their uh xbox game pass page it says how long to beat is is they have the thing there four hours huh so okay. 
Yeah, cool. it's actually somewhere between four and five hours to be, depending on how good you are, puzzles, I suppose. And yeah. I'm not the best, but I'm, I'm no slouch. I would say, like, I'm above average at, at puzzle games. Um, so, yeah. And also, like, if, if a lot of time could be, and, and rightfully so, could be spent just enjoying, like, the environment, the yeah. looking at stuff, listening to the music, and stuff like that. And they do a pretty good job of, like, um, oh, oh, that's one other thing, uh, the sound design that I wanted to, to bring up. Um, there, there is, it's, it's not ultra subtle, but it is, it does have subtlety to it that when you like see me go through that, that little barrier there, when you do something right, the music kind of swells and it lets you know, like, that's good. You brought, <laughs> like, you brought the right globes. Good for you. And you're like, oh, that's right. Okay, cool. It's very satisfying. I sure. enjoyed that a lot. They didn't go like it wasn't like the Zelda like ding. It was more like I'm like oh shit, I did something right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still. I'm. I. I just have to grin at Zeke's Zelda impression there. That was, <laughs> was right on the money. It was right on the money. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Zeke really likes Nintendo games. So I'm just done. He loves them. Uh, he can't get enough of the the old Nintendo. He, he loves. Uh, it's like one of those Zelda sounds. Be bop a doo bop a dee bee. <laughs> you know that? You know, okay, I said. I okay. Let me try it again. Be do 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 do. Is that closer? Okay. I, closer ish. It's like Zelda. Shut home. up! It's Zelda. At home, you know? it's San He's like it's a me, Linkio. Right? That's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, they used show. to be. They used to be. Speaking this, of fucking uh, hating, at, at GDC, the Game Developers Conference, which is the the largest game developer show in the year, um, San Francisco is kind of a, a, a shithole, and uh, there's sure. a lot of homeless folks there, um, especially in the region where GDC was. And there was this one guy every year. I haven't seen him for years. Um, Oh, see, I thought you were going to say there was a bunch of homeless people devs, or and that that's just the game devs. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know where you were going. With this. <laughs> but there was this there was this one homeless guy that every year would realize that it was us, the game devs, and he would stay near one of the, the stick okay. around near one of the hostels where okay. where the indies would stay, and he would walk with us for a bit, and then he would always try to do the Mario theme. Huh. And he would always go like, and then we just give him money to stop, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. It worked every time. And at some point, I asked him like, "Mate, you know the Mario team?" He's like, "Yeah, of course." You just, y'all just give me more money when I mess it up. And I'm like, "That makes sense." Yeah, at least he's honest. <laughs> I really yeah. like that guy. Yeah, it was good. That it was, was good. actually Zeke. Uh, funny enough, he was there. In <laughs> He moonlights every well, that's, that's why I had to think about it. It was like two attempts. I'm like, nice. So, so fun, yeah, funny enough, that's actually on the way back from Burning Man. So, that's what usually Zeke makes it's the a pass pit stop. There. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, you know, he's all drugged out after that. So, he's just like, exactly, exactly. Um, actually, I did think of one game I did play. Yeah, what else that I would uh, Chance of Sonar. Hey, I've heard about this game uh, in a, po a very positive way, but I haven't. Uh, none of us have played it, so please. It is really, really good. It's a. Uh, is it a language game? It's kind of a language game. It's kind of a puzzle game. It's kind of Oberdinny, if you like Oberdin. That's it, what I've heard. A, yeah. It's a logic deduction kind of game. If you played um, um, Heaven's Gate, it's similar Ooh. to that as well. Um, it's gorgeous. Um, and it's just, it's just really, really good. Like you're kind of trying to figure out a language as you're climbing the tower of Babel effectively. Um, and like, as the game progresses, it gets more complex. There's more, there's basically the game just makes it more and more complicated, um, to kind of figure out, but like, there's a real sense because I, I thought of it when, uh, Zeke was talking about that sense of satisfaction. This game also just absolutely nails that because you're kind of figuring out a lot. You're learning a language effectively yeah. or, or multiple. And God, it's really satisfying when you figure things out in this one. Like you, it's a beautiful game. 
Um, it has a bunch of weird pacing issues every now and then, so you got to be a little forgiving of like, you know, there there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of stealth mechanics that not everybody might uh, love, and uh, every now and then you get stuck and you just kind of feel like lost and mm. uh, not in a good way. But like when um, when I was playing, when things were flowing, I was having a great time. I was having a great time. And then when the stealth sections were kind of like, you know, the controls weren't really up to the challenge per se, um, or I just got stuck somewhere, I was having a miserable time. But like, I always wanted to continue because the good was so good that, yeah, strongly recommend that game to anybody who likes the Oprah Dins, uh, the Heaven's Gates, the Curse of the Golden Idol, like those kind of games. Like one hundred percent, just go check it out. Nice. Yeah, uh, my chat's saying I it has a demo as games. well, uh, so you can check out the demo if you're not uh, fully sold uh, just yet. Yeah, that came out uh, early September. I I think like it was during the <coughs> Starfield yep. craze, and so people were talking about it. that. Yeah, and they missed it. So I'm glad you uh, yeah. glad you brought it up. Uh, I wish was it a while ago. Um, speaking of, I was going to say, speaking of, of hating, yeah. uh, the game, uh, I play party animals. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to talk about El Paso, uh, elsewhere. Yeah. So I, I, let's do both. Oh yeah. Party animals. Uh, how is like, it? No, I have a, I have a two word review of party animals and we can move on. Ready? Okay. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Or don't play. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. That was, because I was like, that's ambiguous. Like, oh, would you? I don't know yeah, which true. one that is. Like, true, true, true. Skip it. How about skip it? Okay. Uh, I, uh, I don't know what I've heard great things. Yeah. I, I don't. No, no. It's, it's, it is, it is really great. Um, it's, it's a really super fun game, um, to play, uh, when, when it's competitive. But when you have like, <laughs> like one or a couple of people who are, uh, much, much better than you, God, it makes it so like, it just, it just, it. I threw a controller. I did, and uh, I had to like be consoled by my wife. I'm like, I'm 43 years old. And I'm still doing this shit. What is wrong with me? <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> like, what is my problem? I can't stop myself from throwing a goddamn tantrum about a baby game. This is a baby <laughs> game. Look at this. These jelly babies. Like, I can't stop myself from being competitive in this stupid goddamn game. <laughs> But it does get competitive and it gets like super fun. And there it is. Booge! Controller die? Is it dead? Nope. Nope. It's good. Okay. Nope. That's good. They make it the, Hit the wall and days. literally bounce back. <laughs> oh. Boom. There you go. Um, but I uninstalled it and I hit it. And I just I just recently unhit it because I need to figure <laughs> out how to get a handle on that shit. Like it's better to confront it than just forget. Oh, you that hit part it from your Steam, your Steam game? Directory, I did. Oh, okay. I uninstalled it and hit it almost directly after that. Like I ah. Alt F four the game and just fucking out of sight, out of mind. Oh, it was terrible. I get it. Yeah, but yeah. I would. I mean, I it would be a it would honestly be a blast to, for us to to play at some point. Yeah, we need to for sure. It's yeah. uh, the party game of the year. Some would say. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot of buzz about El Paso uh, elsewhere. Uh, what? What's yes. your What's your take on it? It's. It's really good. Uh, the things, okay. The things that are really, really good about the game is if you like Max Payne, like the old PS one, two, whatever era PC uh, versions of Max Payne, this is a game for you. And yeah. I love those games. So this game was perfect. It's it's like dripping with noir. the The main character speaks barely ever above a whisper. He just kind of talks like this. In a very staccato manner. And he keeps going. My name is James Savage. <laughs> James Savage, yeah. Like that. Yeah. And I, you know, I love that. When they when they lean into stuff like that, fuck it, I'm I'm in. I <laughs> I dig it. Um it's it's stereotypical, and, but it's it's definitely for me. Um <clears throat> the uh the whole premise of the game is you fight werewolves and vampires in a reality shifting motel. Dive through barricades to escape the grasp of evil puppets. Destroy the villain you love. So the basic gist of the game is the, or the premise is you're trying to find your lover and destroy her. 
Um, and the the story, like you get story elements, and um, not not too heavy handed or not too uh, uh, wordy or you know, uh, it doesn't take too long. It's just like a couple of uh, back and forth, maybe a paragraph or two, and then you're yeah. back into the game. The game has fifty levels, but it they go fairly quickly. They're they're oh. only a few minutes, like like five to ten minutes each, give or take. Okay. Um, it took me a little under. It took me nine and nine and a half hours to complete. Um, and uh, it's it's the only thing that it has going against it, in my opinion. Uh, if you if you are if you don't mind like the graphical like uh, artistic choice of making it look retro, if that doesn't bother you, the only thing that it doesn't bother me. The only thing that bothered me was it get, it does get a little repetitive. Um, the levels. Wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not a not a shit ton of enemy uh variants. There's a couple of uh boss fights here and there. I think it could like if they made it like I want to say at least 3 or 4 more like cool boss fights, this game would be fucking stellar. But as it is, it's great, but I wanted more of a uh a, a challenge every so often. So like if after 10 levels if they gave you a boss fight every time, that'd be awesome. But as it is, I think they only have like, I want to say like three, or they could have like seven uh, boss fights. Because um, those are really fun, and those, those are the real challenge of the game. Um, as far as like, like it, it does have the, the slow-mo diving through the air whilst firing guns and stuff like that. It has a lot of that, but I think the game would also benefit from making that use up the, see the yellow bar that's 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 next to me that's your slow-mo bar basically your cool guy bar mm -hmm. um and the diving through the air takes up a lot of cool guy juice whereas just standing there and then hitting the slow-mo and and headshotting all of them takes way like far less i think if they uh lowered how much cool guy juice the diving through the air use i would have used it a lot more i i ended up like after the first like 10 levels i ended up using it very little um just because it would it would empty out my bar and sometimes like when you get like surrounded or a boss is on top of you like you need that cool guy bar and you don't have it so uh diving through the air just sucks it all up and, it, and it, i wish it didn't because it, it does feel cool when you're like bow hit shot bow bow and you're like oh you know yeah. doing the max pain thing it's great yeah. um but yeah it's it's they they make no uh uh like <laughs> there's no hidden like they love max Payne and they made a max Payne game you know they're not trying to like be subtle about it <laughs> the only sure. thing the only difference is the um the story has takes there's no reality like it does not take place in any sort of real area you get in an elevator and you're basically descending deeper and deeper into they never call it hell but right. it feels like that might be the you know what they're what they're doing um like the the see that's that's just fucking awesome. I love that shit. It's so cool. I wish I would do more. Um but yeah, it's fantastic. Uh about 10 hours. It's uh uh 20 bucks on sale right now, 10% off for for 18. Um and I guess I'll let you make your own judgments on whether that's, you know, 10 hours for 18 bucks is that worth it? But I thought it was worth it. I had a blast. Um there are also collectibles you can find in the games, little little snippets that um, some of them like uh, add context and some of them are just fucking Rick and Morty improv hilarity. Like there's, there's a, you can find radios that play this continuing radio show called pill cop. Nice. And this, then that's basically what you are. Cause they, they like in order to heal yourself in the game, you just find pills and you just, I swear to God, thousands of pills were downed in my place okay. um and they kind of lean into that by making the radio show pill cop and uh they kind of and some of them are like some of the radios you find are like commercials for like random shit and you can tell they're like all right this is the gist of the commercial go crazy <laughs> and it rambles on a little bit of it like like rick and morty you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. uh like the interdimensional television where they're just like he's a guy and he's fighting a car like wouldn't he lose every time like it goes a lot like that that's how it goes that's great 
that goes. Uh, my community would be I upset say, if I didn't mention this, but go ahead and then I'll mention it, Robbie. So my community's not upset. I, I will say, as as a developer, one thing I've I've learned is that one of the best things that can happen is somebody writes a review that just really sort of like nails the vibe you're going for. Ah. And I feel El Paso elsewhere, Jovan Casey over at Rock Paper Shotgun wrote the best opening uh, paragraph for any review for El Paso elsewhere. It goes. El Paso Elsewhere feels like the canceled shooter PS2 adaptation of an incredibly short-lived image co comics horror series from the mid-90s, leaked by a disgruntled developer over Google Drive more than a decade after the fact. It's something that would have had a six-episode animated series broadcast out of order at 1 a.m. It's a testament to that moment in pop culture where the coolest thing imaginable was a tortured guy in a trench coat holding a gun in each hand and fighting monsters. Whether you regard this aesthetic with respect or disgust will help you determine whether there's anything for you here. I was like, that's it. That's wow, we game. didn't. We should have just read that. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah you should have. I shouldn't have said a damn word. <laughs> <laughs> you just outdid Zeke in every way imaginable. <laughs> in, in like, in like a twentieth of the up. time. That was like twenty seconds. Oh man, boy, that guy made me look like a piece of shit, didn't he? <laughs> that, that guy should write video, write about Siobhan. video games. <laughs> Siobhan did great. She did great. She did really great. Yeah, incredible opening paragraph. Like I would be really happy if I had that. They're ten yeah. out of ten. Yeah, uh, yeah, they understood the assignment. Uh, anyways, real quick, I, we don't have to spend any more than thirty seconds on this. Uh, I okay. I ventured into Hollow Cure, which is Vampire Survivors, yeah. uh, a la VTuber. The game is free. If you can get away from the VTuber side of things, this game's fucking phenomenal. It has no right of being <laughs> as good as it is, and it is one of the best. Uh, like. Uh, vampire survivor clones survivor games yeah wh whatever you want to wh whatever you want to call it it's phenomenal uh it, they have all of the best bits of that uh as well as like vtubers uh the, specifically the holo live uh brand ip uh and there are it's i learned about vtubers for about five hours yesterday uh it turns out there's a lot to know uh, and I learned all of it. It's full of inside jokes from that like entire community and all those specific VTubers. Uh, it's got it's got a full on fishing mini game in it, Co. Uh, if that it all uh, appeases you, um, blink. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and you're rewarded uh, for the amount of successful fishing. It's basically the fishing mini game is DDR. So I'm gonna, you, need you to, I'm gonna need you to stop talking. You cast it. I, I don't have time for this right now. And then it's just up, down, left, right, A, B. And then if you do it 50 times, there's an achievement and you make money from it. And then- God damn it, JP, stop it. Then Co, with the money, guess what you can do? I swear to God, if you can- You can buy better fishing rods, Co. <laughs> damn it, and dude! there's a farming simulator across the road. <laughs> you just walk over <laughs> across the road. And you start planting things so you can cook it, so you can fight a giant anime waifu right here. And that's some inside joke in the VTuber world. I don't know who that is, but I killed her. I don't with, have time for this. I killed her with my uh, butt plug. Yeah, I didn't stutter. That's in the game. That per that piqued Zeke's interest. And I had the uh, spiders, uh, an aura of spider cooking. Don't look up why it's called that. Apparently, I don't know what that means, um, but yeah, that's wild, dude. So this entire thing, they basically were like, "Okay, let's pay it's someone free. to make vampire survivors." No, it's free. That he will not accept. No, 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 no. no. no I'm saying. Oh, okay. The the Holo Cure people were like, "Let's pay someone to basically just take vampire survivors and make it in our universe." And put in some fun extra stuff, and we're just gonna give it to I, free. Is, is it? It's is a it like fan a promo game. thing? Is no, it it's an a fan. Ad? It's, oh, it's a, a fan, fan game. game. It's made by one guy who's an anime, like actually a celebrated no animator that kidding. did. Uh, uh, God damn it! He did uh, uh, R River City Brawlers, the uh, whatever whatever that recent uh, indie success was that I'm blanking on. He's also animated uh, like an episode of Bleach. He's done an episode of One Piece. Uh, River, River City Girls. Uh, yeah, he was the animator for that game. He did some Whoa. Castlevania stuff as well for Netflix. He's animated a couple of those. Um, and it's completely fan-made. And apparently the, the Holo Live people, which is the VTuber company, have actually offered to buy this so that they can sell it. And he said no. 
emphatically, I will not do that. Uh, I'm just going to keep wow, making what it. A, what an absolute chat. Yeah. Oh my God. It, it's like a love Jeez. letter to that that world. Uh, it's got all the memes, all the all the inside jokes and everything. Uh, and it's held in like very high regard within that community. And then it's got like third like 30 VTubers in it, I think. All with inside jokes, <coughs> all with different abilities, skills. There's a ton of weapons. All those are inside. It's I was kind of surprised at how big and deep the the game is. Uh in all it's got multiple levels. I, I unlocked four. Uh <laughs> nice, Rami. I unlocked four. It's got hard stages of all the levels. Uh there's bosses, it's 20 minute time limit. There's different builds. I'm playing like a healing build here uh, from the goddess of nature. VTuber. I don't know. She gets like 15,000 viewers or something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, okay. I, I learned all about all the crazy VTubers that exist that are massively more successful than anyone on this show. <laughs> it's kind of wild to see. Millions upon millions of subscribers and viewers. Uh, wow. Anyways, that's all look here. It's free. You can just download it. There's no, you don't have to do anything for it. Uh, that's what my community voted for me to play yesterday. So that's what I did. And now I'm talking and preaching about how good of a game it is. Uh, Co, one minute on Lamplighters League. I saw really bad reviews, but I saw you did two streams of it. Yeah, was that sponsored? It, I mean, or what, what, what's first going on there? First one. First one sort of was, second one was. Um, okay. And that's mainly because I did the sponsor stream at the wrong time. So it's... <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. So here, nice. here's the way that it works. Lamplighters is fully voice acted, has a cool aesthetic, has some really cool, interesting ideas. But the problem is that I feel like... Like, I, I played Lamplighters for four hours, and by the time I was done, I was like, man... If I had played this and just had a sit down with the devs, I feel like this game could have been like significantly better. Um, it, there's just, there's a lot of kind of overt things about the game that, that don't either make a lot of sense or don't really flow well, or it's like you kind of see the way that the devs wanted something to work, but it doesn't really work that well or doesn't really make sense. Like, um, like uh, there's no quick save and quick load. Mm. But you can save the game and load the game. It's just really clunky, and it's like that's you. You need something like that for a game like this. Uh, like when you when you pick up items in the world, like that you that you use, you can't actually get any information on what they do easily. Um, there's some weirdness in how it presents data. There's some weirdness in the way that they they uh, they sh they say how moves work. That doesn't make it super clear. There's just there's all this stuff with the game where it's like, I feel like there's something in here but I feel like it needs more workshopping. Okay. Which is weird because it's from uh, uh, like uh, Hairbrain Studios, Weeby Hairbrain, which oh, really? did uh, the, Hairbrain the schemes. battle. Hairbrain Schemes. Hairbrain Schemes. Uh, yeah, thank you. And they did the Battletech turn-based game, which I think is phenomenal. Like, I love that game. It's great. And in some ways, it's kind of like they, they not only didn't take in stuff that works from that into this game, but in some ways, there's like this little step backwards in some ways where it's like, no, you did something similar to this better in Battletech. Like, why are you doing it like this here? Oh, you got to go? Yeah. Yeah, he has got to Yeah, stay. I got to oh, go. I actually, I actually got to go too. But anyway, it's the, the short of it is it's a, it's a cool aesthetic. It's fully voice acted. It, it was, it was kind of enjoyable, but there's just, there's some things about it that make it so it just, I don't feel like all the puzzle pieces kind of click together properly. Got it. Okay. Yeah. The, the, you're, you're echoing what I saw the reviews say for it. So. I was curious because I, I knew you did the sponsored stream and then saw you went back to it, but it makes sense that you got the times wrong and had to do it twice. <laughs> that was it's totally on me. And they, <laughs> they were super cool about it because I super broke embargo with my first stream. So, oh, um, really? Yeah, oh, Par Par no. So shout out and thanks to Paradox. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> they were very understanding. We had we had unfortunately switched to a new calendar thing and, and it did not properly oh, translate no, over. No, was, no, that's... Yeah, so I, I just... But, you know, it's funny because like the whole the, I think I did it wrong on like a, on, on an off day because, you know, I didn't get any messages from anyone about doing it at the wrong time. Oh. And then all of a sudden I'm I'm in my management, you know, slack and I'm like, OK, I just got done with lamplighters. And my, my manager is like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, 
Oh God, it is. Um, so yeah, that was that was uh, that was a bit of thing. No, but they were they were that's super my nightmare. They were super cool about it. They were they were totally understanding. Um, they they had no issues with it. So we and and since things have been put in place, so that never happens again. There you go. <laughs> Ever. Fantastic. When, when, I, when I mess up a time zone, I get I get JP angry on my Twitter, and when you get a mess up a timeline, you get Paradox being nice to you. I don't understand, man. Yeah. You get hey. treated differently. Yeah. Just say it. It was those, very nice. Those though. angry DMs. <laughs> I had an angry DM today, <laughs> and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> let me hit it. Oh, he joined the. Let me just hold him backspace. He's here. We're good to go. We're good to go. All right. <laughs> you were ready. You were yeah. Yeah. We're almost. We're almost good. Anyways, let's do some shout outs. Uh, Zeke had to go. So we're going to, I will put this up. Uh, he's on a show right now uh, called Blade Runner Electric Dreams, a tabletop uh, RPG show <laughs> over at twitch.tv slash table story that I completely forgot about. So go and check him out. Uh, tomorrow is his day off. I'm sure he will be back on Tuesday. I have no idea what Zeke is streaming, but make sure to give him a follow. You can do so via the uh, title <laughs> of all of our channels, or you can just go to twitch.tv slash uh, Ezekiel underscore II and hit the follow button. Uh, Co, what do you got going on? Do some shout outs. Oh, he's starting my absolutely... peas. Sorry, that's right, he said that. Co, shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, huge thank you to Rami. Uh, you know, Rami, one of these days we're gonna bring you in and just like talk about fun, nice things the whole time. <laughs> and it's gonna be great. And we're just gonna laugh and smile and have a, gr a good time. Um, but until that day, we really appreciate having you here, bringing your insights. So thank you for it. As always, a big thanks to JP and Zeke. My name is Ko. Hi, uh, we're starting Noketober. So I'm currently playing through the Resident, 4, uh, Resident Evil 4 remake DLC, which I would have loved to have talked about today, but we ran out of time. Um, I haven't finished next it yet, week. so that's good. Yep, next week. We also got uh, a bunch of scary games coming up on my desktop right now. I have an Ad Infinium, Fear and Hunger, File Destined, Killer Frequency, My Friendly Neighbor, uh, SCP Containment, which I've never played before. Um, Chorodosis, which is apparently and we got all sorts of scary <laughs> games coming up we also have a bunch of releases we got lords of the fallen coming up soon we've also got alan wake 2 this month skitty skylines 2 star uh not star starman no spider-man spider-man that's coming up too <laughs> spider starman and uh yeah we got all sorts of fun stuff so we'd love to see in the channel we'll also be doing starfield and finishing up our big run of that in the evenings i'll be back tonight with that actually and uh yeah it'll be fun so thanks for watching see you next week awesome stuff hi uh tomorrow i it's either we might do more doke upon with stripping and them. Depends on how much I hate myself in the morning uh, and if I commit to that or not. Uh, if not, we'll do some more cyberpunk. I might be here Tuesday on my normal day off for some uh, uh, taint, Tainted Grail. Co, you know the game that I'm talking about. What's the name? Tainted oh, Grail? Oh, yeah. Tainted Grail. Yeah. yeah I'm doing man. a sponsored stream for that. It might be on Tuesday. It might be on Wednesday. Wednesday, I think I'll be checking out. Uh, I've, I have access to Assassin's Creed Mirage early. Uh, so I'll be diving into that whenever that embargo is up. I think it's Wednesday. It might be Thursday. Um, and then we're kind of just going through that Spider-Man 2, everything that Co listed as well. All the new releases, uh, City Skylines, Spider-Man 2, which I'm very excited for. And then we'll just Spider keep Spider-Star-Man's of uh, Colon uh, Field. Rami. <laughs> What you, yes, universe. Rami, what do you got going on? Uh, I heard you're going to be really into that uh, Holo Cure game. Uh, specifically <laughs> u utilizing the butt plug weapons. Uh, talk to us about that. <laughs> I'm so, I lost it so bad. Oh, he came up with the... Oh, yeah. Um, hi, I'm Rami. Uh, I, uh, I, I make video games. I talk about video games. Uh, I get called in when bad shit hits the fan of the games <laughs> industry. And uh, yeah, I, I I I love you all. I'm always happy to be here. I do hope indeed that there will be some time where we can talk about nice things because it has been a little depressing on this site. Uh, thankfully, just you know, hanging out here does make the day feel a little better. So thanks so much for all the love and uh, and understanding and uh, chats and uh, for the group of three of you that sang along with the EDF song in chat, like you're the real ones. Appreciate that. Uh, follow me on Twitter, <laughs> THA underscore Rami. Every now and then I stream on Twitch uh, and, uh, you know, just find me anywhere. Fantastic. We will definitely have to have you on when bad shit's not going down. That's my promise That'd to you. Nice. Happy times next Rami episode. Maybe. Nice. We'll see. 
you, you'll just see that there's only bad news so i can't come back for the next 45 episodes or something it's gonna be great yeah yeah we'll see what happens what anyways else? thank you all for watching the vibe will be up at youtube.com slash me jp in about 40 or 50 minutes depending on how long it takes to process we'll be back next week we we're gonna have dan on uh but he's doing halloween month all month so uh, we'll talk to him soon i guess um but we'll figure out a guest and let you guys know Thank you so much. We're out here. We'll see you next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Have a good one. Bye-bye. There we go.